turn your eyes upon Jesus. Got the uh, questions list open on the yeah. computers. Yeah. I think yeah. everyone except Primal. I just opened yeah. it up right now. Oh, that, oh. I'm going to be in there for only like a few minutes. Come, so. you see, okay. What we'll do is we will make chocolate, but with salt. Also, I pressed the recording button already, so everyone's live. Hello and welcome to the Mullen Studios podcast or the 2022 Q&A video. Say hi, everybody. I completely <laughs> forgot this was a podcast. Hello, Mark. Hello, I am just Primal, not known by... I. Uh, I. Uh, yeah, thanks for outing me on air, but ah, what the hell. My Hi, everybody! Like, <laughs> oh yeah, Donkey Kong's I, with us as well. He's uh playing with an oven mitt or something. And <laughs> I was eat. and I was eating, so... But it's gone, so I'll say, Hi, everyone! <laughs> Okay. Hello, Mario. Oh, this is chaotic. Hi. This is Luigi. <laughs> Hi, Luigi. That's my Luigi to you, Mario. Should we just go around and introduce each other? Yeah. Okay. So Please. first, um, okay. How about this? We'll go by the the list of the how everyone's presented on the Discord. So, uh, Primal, you start your intro. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Not Vince's Review Radio Show. I know, it's very sad. Um, but uh, Oh, yeah, you have I, your own podcast, too, don't you? Yeah, this is uh, Just Primal. I am uh, currently guest starring in a few things, just to get my name out there, before I actually start working on this podcast, because I feel like it's a better move. You have to give me a link to your podcast so I can put it in the description for you. Well, it, he just said it's a work in progress. Yeah, but one of it gets to that point. Okay, then, uh, Lachlan, you're next. Uh, Hello, everyone. I'm Locky. You might know me as part of Thomas Comedies, Thomas Meeple Railway, and Very Fred Funnies. But I'm also the creator of Thomas's Random Railway Tales, the Mr. Men parody shorts, Harvey Beak's The Later Years, Yu-Gi-Oh! But They're in Space, and The Raccoons of Bridge. One of those was fake. Have fun guessing which one it was. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real. It was the Yu-Gi-Oh one because there's no series that exists like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're like Yu-Gi-Oh no. Yu-Gi-Oh no, bro. Oh no. More like Yu-Gi-Oh oh bother. All right, it's Mech. Greetings and be on the new. This is MVC Mechachu. You guys probably recognize me for a couple of things. I recently have taken overcharge of the Thomas and Friends Meet series, along with Jared, who unfortunately cannot be here with us. I was the one responsible for the Thomas and Friends Meets episode of Arlo, Dex the Swede, and the two Dab Chick videos. And outside of that, I end up voicing Cranky the Crane in Thomas and Friends comedies, as well as Reneas. And I ended up voicing Charlie in both that and Meeple Railway. And I also end up voicing the mayor in Meeple Railway. The best Along character. with Harvey. Along with uh, Harvey. Oh, and aside oh, yeah, from that, I've also voiced Jack for Random Railway Tales. I should have oh, mentioned right. earlier. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm cutting you off. Uh, I should have mentioned earlier, apparently I'm in the talks of voicing uh, Sir Handel. Oh, yeah, for that's our, right. For, uh, the, for, I believe it's the Sonic, it's the Thomas Meat series. Is this the series? Uh, Thomas Comedies. Comic, yeah, I have comic. so many Thomas oh, yeah. shows. This is sad, man. Uh, uh, and I forgot to mention that I'm Diesel and Percy and Duncan and Diesel 10. Is that yep. everyone or am I missing someone? Um, oh, you forgot about my twin brother, laddie. Oh, how could I forget? Oh, I feel so dumb. I'm also Fred. If anyone remembers Fred, we got a Bring back Fred at some point. We, we need to. That's been something we've been holding back for a long time. Another thing, uh, I've also been kind of tight-casted in a couple of other voices that we have yet to see in any of the Thomas and Friends related shows. Case in point, I'm able to do the voice of Daisy. Ooh, I dare say, voice acting is bad for my swerves. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, brother. <laughs> oh, all right, then. Uh, we shall move along to uh, Mystery You're Man. You're not offending people with your bad Cockney accent. You're listening to Hyperlink Blocked, not no point one. This is Mystery Man. I do random, I do all sorts of voices on this show. You might know me as Gordon or Sir Top of Matt or Ryan or uh, I think that's about it. I don't do much. I might cast more, but what we'll see. I'll, I'll try to get you some more voices. To... It all depends on your schedule. There's that. But outside of here, you might know me oh, as got... one of the crazy sons of sons of basketball players that look like Tiger Woods that run the classic series creation. Very classic. They created some things, yet and it's a series. You know, that's how you know it is the best name known to mankind. It's so, Other it's than so Thomas Thomas Shakespeare Railway. is quaking in his cheeks. Other than Thomas Meeple Railway, where the adventures are adequate and the voice acting is wooden. You voice Victor in that, if I recall. Oh, yes! The really Wait. thing on voicing Victor is... Honestly, a bit of a stretch, because, to be quite frank, I've gotten into hat and time recently. So, I just decided, I need practice with the voice I'm using from one of those impressions. So, I, you know, had stupid ideas and brought it down here instead. Time, I, I need to watch, I need to play that game. It's a very good game! I would definitely recommend the Steam version. It's definitely the best version because, you know, mods. You know, lots of mods, very good mods, some very stupid mods, including a writable Thomas the Tank Engine mod. Well, Thomas, we better get our stream back on track or I'll cut your buffers off and sell them to make tin cans. And you know what happens when I'm unable to live without my tin cans. Oh, yeah, I not like that at all. Sandwiches. Who are the Canadians left to introduce? So let's do that. Oh, I'm sure not the only one. Yeah, you're not the only one. You got a friend, Tyler. You didn't tell me you were in Canada. Oh wait, shoot! I gotta introduce myself. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> wait, this is my introduction. Oh no! Uh, hello, I. My name is Mr. Milan Persia, better known in the circles of the interwebs as. The Milan Tuner. I'm the crazy Canadian that created the Rose of Crotonia and the Milan Tune channel and Milan's Ramblings. But not as many people watch Milan's Ramblings. I mainly do Crotonia. I have done things for this channel. I cleaned up the animation for Thomas Comedies and the Magic Railroad. I have been like I have been Delmar's wood dealer for about a year or so now. Yes. Giggity. We've been doing have, the black market. I think I've done I'm not sure if I've done any voices for the channel, but I would. I'm hoping to do so anyway. Actually, you did voice uh, one you of did the, the narrator Thomases the... in TTTES Show Number Three years ago. You did. You did the oh, narrator. Yeah. You did oh, the narrator. If I recall correctly, in the in betweens, like the last time on the Thomas and Friends, the Thomas comedies and the Magic Railroad movie, you were that oh, guy. Oh yeah, I forgot about that for a second. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Like so. So I, you're, also, you're also in Levels of Hell. What? Yes, I'm also in Levels of Hell, which is where me and my friends, we go back and we go look at things that make me either laugh or cry or sometimes a mixture of both. <laughs> oh, so, okay. is very much the is very much the middle one. So, and in comes the comments that will kill me for speaking ill of Victor Tanzig. So, if you're laughing and crying at the same time, would that be considered lying or crafting? <laughs> crafting. I like crafting. Crap. Yeah. Okay. We got so one more to introduce. Yeah. So, we gotta, we gotta find out where this other Canadian's from. <laughs> well, obviously, he's from Canada. Yeah, but I ain't telling which province, though. Just for safety. But anyways... Very fair. Yeah, anyways... Hello, everyone. I am Tyler... AKA known as Tyler3967. <laughs> Forgive me for pronouncing it wrong, but if you, if some of you have known me, 
You may know that I am the creator of my old model train series that I did back from 20, 2009 to 2013, and I'm slowly getting back into it. Just need some updates and got to do my layouts as well, etc. But you know the idea. Not only do I do that, but I am also the... I also do MLP comic dubs, aka My Little Pony, for those who are bronies as well. And other stuffs I like to do for fun, including audio editing and music arranging slash composing. And I sing and <laughs> and do voice acting in everyone else's projects, including some who I know in this call. I guess you could say he's princely considering one of the roles in my series. Oh! <laughs> Brony Squad, a power pony up. Also, yeah. also, I am Canadian, so I know a friend of mine who's... I know I'm not the only one, considering I'm a friend to someone who's also in Canada as well. And oh, Canada. Yeah, guys, I need to take a pill. I can't. You want to hear more of Tyler's voice than just watch random railway tales and keep a close ear open whenever Stanley, Bertie, or Hero speak. Also, those are all the, all the roles oh, yeah. he's casting. And I am also in Thomas Comedies and Thomas Meeple Railway series as Edward and. Uh, and Rocky, Bumper. who's been dead for a few years, and a few Did additional characters. Man, like, uh, I can't Single Man and the announcer. So yeah, that's pretty much yeah. me. And you also okay. sung uh, Rain Goodbye Rainbow Road, which is still one of my favorite videos. That yes, made back. that one too. Yeah, and actually I might bring back fun, but just because it's just like, uh, the way how you screamed was just hilarious. Like, don't bloody touch me. Yeah. <laughs> yo, when, yo, when you voice Rocky, do you go, yo, Adrian, hey, how's it going? I'm from Pennsylvania. I, I, uh, I do all these Wrong things. Wrong Rocky. No, 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 no. <laughs> this Rocky he was talking about, he goes, don't ever touch me. Yes. We got a sequel. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah, I didn't want to. me. <laughs> Along, I just had a thought, you know, with you saying you were Delmar's wood dealer, it just makes you sound like oh, a Canadian I, wood dealer. I, I was going to call out, but I didn't want to embarrass the guy. <laughs> well, I mean, nobody I mean, move. I have all of the wooded trains. I mean, I did say giggity, so nobody there's that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Listen, my friend, a friend Delmar, he needs a busy island set. He needs a Vickers town and a ferry. Soon as possible, we gotta make this deal happen. So we're gonna, gonna take, gonna, off, we're gonna take Don Lockie. Right? Don Lockie is gonna send a message to Mr. Tanzik. It's the Milan father. <laughs> the Milan father. That should be that yeah, should be your next Christmas stream. The Milan father. Oh, I'm the Milan father. Wait, 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 wait. I'm the Milan of the Milan too, and I'm the Milan father. I make Wait. the wood deals happen. I make the merchandise sales move. Hi, Mr. Frog. I'm Wait. Uncle Tunia. The <laughs> I thought this was the Q&A stream. Oh, yeah, well, that's we, right. I completely we gotta, forgot. We gotta oh, ask questions. Wow. This is gonna be a swell time. Well, technically, I could just use timestamps, so anyone who just wants to hear the questions yeah. can just skip ahead, and then hopefully... Everyone is listening to this because this was just hilarious. Just having random okay, discussions. Okay, so um, you know how I said that we'd be reading through these alphabetically for the order of us in the chat. Yeah. Yep. I might make an exception this round because my questions are third place. Oh yeah, that's right. All right. Uh, who goes first? Obviously, Delmar. <laughs> Oh, right. I go first. Okay, I I get yeah. Liger Tamer one hundred, uh, who I actually did some voices for in the past and did some new recent videos. Uh, ask, no. uh, what are your thoughts Stop. on the chosen cast of the new Super Mario movie? <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> it's, I mean, Hello, it's kind of <laughs> mixed. So, like, I'm fine with Luigi being Charlie Day because I can actually see him, Toad. I mean, I like King Michael Keane, but I don't know. In fact, it's an entire species that he's yeah. voicing. The one voice that I cannot see is Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. I don't hate the guy. He's just been in way too much stuff lately. No, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm Seth Rogen. 
I'm gonna become all just like Chris Pratt. <laughs> I'll be honest. I, I thought you were, I thought you were gonna, gonna be the if first were... Donkey Kong that's high on some dank kush. I <laughs> thought you were gonna comment on Chris Pratt as Mario because everybody, <laughs> I think, going off of what Milan, well not Milan, Lachlan was going to say, I think that would have been the case as well. I'm, I'm yeah, fine with Chris yeah. Pratt. He's all right. Uh, I don't know how well, he's yeah. gonna do the Mario voice, but I mean, I mean, it's a me. We got I'm Mari, Mario. We got Chris Pratt and Charlie Day. We got Emmett and Benny from the Lego Movie. Well, pretty much, as, the, I have as the Mario Brothers. I personally oh, yeah. have nothing against Chris Pratt as an actor. Heck, I don't even have anything against him as a person. It's just this does not sound like a fitting role. It's like casting Nicolas Cage as the fat controller. Oh, I'm you Nicolas can blame Cage. that on Hollywood for messing it all up. I'm Nicolas Cage. You've if it does go down the top of the movie, you're going to the tunnel. I mean, if it makes if it if it means anything, I think Chris Pratt would. Okay, I know this is a different movie, but I think he would pull off a decent Garfield. Oh yeah, I think he would be an okay Garfield. I, yeah, but maybe. Mario, I, I have no, I have no real faith in Chris Pratt as Mario. Everyone else sounds like they could be an all right job. Chris Pratt just sounds unfitting for the role. I, I think if you were up like to that, me, I would have swapped Jack Black. Oh, sorry, sorry, I, was I cutting you off? I'm sorry. Uh, but, I'm uh, I, oh, sorry. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm cutting you off. Uh, uh, if it were up to me. Uh, I would have swapped Jack Black and Seth Rogen. Uh, I would have, I would have yeah. done like, like, every, like, um, Chris Pratt as Mario. No, <laughs> out. Charles Martinet, get it, get in as Mario. I don't know why they kicked him out. Uh, he's I like mean, iconic. He's, he's still in the film. It's just gonna be treated like a Stan Lee situation. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, well, yeah, but but it's like, bro, he's an, literally yeah. Mario. He is From literally an Mario. From an objective standpoint, like, on the one hand, like, literally the only, like, it makes sense from the one and only standpoint it makes sense from a corporate standpoint. But on the other hand, like, yeah, it, like, especially Charles Martin A, like, he's literally proven that he can voice act with these characters say full sentences and still be legible and heck he's even done full sentence voice acting outside of mario mm -hmm. i mean have you seen Mar his instagram yeah yeah i have so it's like you know like it literally only saying. makes sense from a corporate bring in the money standpoint that charles martinet was replaced but i will say one voice that I think was a stroke of genius that I'm looking forward to seeing. Jack Black Bowser. No question. Was, that is going to be fun like, to I was, see. I was legit going to comment on that. Like I, I think it would be interesting to have, and I was going to bring in someone else with this, I was going to say it was, it would be interesting to hear Poe and Gantu playing Bowser and Kamek respectively. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, honestly, I'm really interested in... Uh... Honestly, I'm really interested in seeing how Jack Black portrays Bowser. I mean, if it's anything like uh, the bad guy in that uh, rock opera episode of Clone High, I think it could work pretty well. What Was yeah. that Jack Black? Yeah, it was. That was Jack Black as the guy who kept pushing raisins on the studio. They literally said it was going to be Jack Black in the preview, in the end of the previous episode. Oh yeah, kind of like how they I, did with. Uh, I don't remember that much of Clone High, so forgive me. Although the theme <laughs> song is really good. Yeah, it is. Okay. Next question. All right, you see, what is your most slash least favorite episode of the Delmar Show? Oh gosh, I haven't watched those yeah. the Delmar Show in years. Yeah, ninety four oh. episodes. No, I'll I think it's eighty eight. Oh, oh my bad. I'm going to abstain from this question because I'll be perfectly honest, even with people I'm subscribed to or work with, I don't always watch everything and the Delmar show is included in that, so. Well, I mean, I'm not expecting to oh, have all my friends oh, see all of my videos, like, no, 
no, I, no, I gotcha. I was just putting it on the record. It's like I, I know my friend Doug. He watches all of them, but then there's others like my friend James. He only watches like my regular stuff, but not my Thomas stuff. So I mean, what about I, Bob? Uh, well, I, I don't know, but like. Not, I'm not expecting all of my friends to watch every video because no insane man has done that. Um, yeah. My least favorite episode, gosh, anything that's like before 2016 because that can be a bit cringy sometimes because in the time period I was in. And my favorite episode, I don't actually really have like a personal favorite because uh, each one, it depends. Like, because when you. Re I f I'm sure you all, as video makers, can agree when you watch a video from a specific time, you remember, like, where you were, like, how you were mentally or financially, yeah. uh, what was going on in that particular time of making that video. True. Uh, there were some episodes I remember I was very passionate about talking about stuff, and then I remember, uh, like, for example, Superman 64, uh, I know, I remember when editing it, Windows Movie Maker kept crashing so much, and it was just a review that I was like, I just want to get this done, and after three times, I finally got it, but mm. it, it was just annoying from an editing point of view. I think we all can agree what is your most problematic episode, Timmy the Tooth. Oh yes, with copyright oh. strikes. Why Universal? I was I was giving praises by riffing on your tooth, and I'm actually happy to see that you can at least watch this full series on Peacock for free. So that that makes me happy there. Yeah, but I think some of the puppets went on to be used in other works. Yeah, although I was really surprised to see that the Timmy the Tooth puppet uh, survived. Uh, even though his eyes are a different color in like some recent interviews and celebrating the show's 25th anniversary. Oh. Okay. I didn't know that. It's pretty, I'll have to try well, to find I'm a feeling... photo of it. Yeah, well, I'm sure he's looking better than the Jeff Wiggle puppet is now. Oh, or... Ghibli, Ghibli. Or 10 cents. Oh, oh shots fired. Okay, last question from Liga Tamer is Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask? Super Mario 64. The sun sung. The sun sung. Hope you were trying to sleep. No, 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 no. I've I'll been over stop right there. The I've been real solid game is the Sonic Lost World DLC. <laughs> oh, I've been oh yeah. Uh, but I, I, tr I play both. I never beat them. And. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate, especially from my good friend, Nerd Thomas, but uh -oh. I'm not the biggest fan of those two. I mean, they're not bad games, but they're just not my cup of tea. In fact, I don't really own the copies of those games in my N64 library. Real talk. <laughs> Real talk. I thought your answer was going to be Wind Waker. Oh, well, well see, th since they were, you know, N64 <coughs> games, I think I pick a game from the N64, you know? I just thought they were talking about Zelda games. Yeah. No, he, he gave me two yeah. options, either an ocarina or a mask, and I choose an Italian plumber. I don't know what I was going with this. I'll be I chose a freaking hedgehog, though. <laughs> Ocarinas and masks are bad. The only thing you need is a crowbar. <laughs> You could beat the <laughs> shit out of Ganon with that. <laughs> hey. or, you can, or a Gatling gun. Is Why, there an actual you, crowbar in those games? <laughs> Why, thank you, Mr. Butler Tron. You're yeah, welcome. Right. Marty, Marty as me, Wesley. As for me, I've been Ocarina of Time all a lot. Though I haven't even finished the whole game of Majora's Mask, considering it was a lot different for me back then. Also, I, I also thought that the whole flea day mechanic was kind of confusing the do in my opinion yeah so all right next up because oh boy we got yeah, a long Acclia way Attack. to go from Ackley Attack TV uh, between you working on the Thomas comedies and the Thomas me railway which one of the two series have you made uh, that you enjoyed the working on the most 
Thomas Meeple Railway. I like Thomas Comedy's fine and it's still going. Like, I know Lachlan has a new story that he wants to do that we kind of need to do some work on now that I think about it because we haven't really advanced the script much. But, uh, in terms of which one I enjoy making, it's Thomas Meeple Railway. The fact that I can actually make my own set, uh, and there seems to be more creative freedom with Thomas Meeple Railway than I have with comedies because I'm not only limited to like the amount of footage that's available between the models and CGI, which I know if we ever do a CGI episode, we need to do lip syncing. I know that was a thing when I released Toby's uh, special surprise, Lachlan commented like, you should have done the lip syncing, which to be fair, um, I probably should have. I mean, I could uh, probably yeah. make mouth frame animations. I mean, you've seen my work in Question Mark 5. I can Hello, do... Hello, everyone. I can do lip sync. I'm Thomas, and I like doing lip syncing on the island of Sodor. <laughs> right. But also, Thomas Meeple Railway, I, I feel more creative freedom, I guess. I mean, I'm still good at work on comedies, but most of the time I'm focusing on the Meeple Railway, because i just been thinking of ideals and uh, stuff like that, so that's my favorite that I've worked so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I I can respect that uh, because you know I'm still up and coming myself, and I've been wanting to get some creative freedom for myself as well by doing like scripts for like I have episode one done for the podcast, and I'm planning a friend of ours into episode two, and I can kind of understand where you're coming from with the whole creative control and passion in the project thing the problem is you know it's you know you know there's burnout and all that but i can kind of understand where you're coming from yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh let's see number two looking back on when you first started making videos back in 2010 all the way to where you are now how much do you believe that your work has changed or improved from when you first started a lot has improved uh like if you compare like Okay, for example, like, if you compare one of my older Daryl Marshall episodes to one of my recent Winter Railway videos, how I presented it, um, my humor's also changed, um, and, and it's not so much, like, in terms of videos that you can back that it changed, like, when I mentioned earlier about how, when you could tell how you were back then, mentally, physically, and all that, uh, comparing myself now to what I was like five, seven years ago, it was like, holy crap, I changed so much. But uh, that's when not... I first met When I first met Delmar, when I first saw his videos, he didn't know where, where the, he didn't, he, he, the, 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 uh, the dropper tool in MS Paint, he, he, uh, he wasn't using that to edit his faces. He was just using the, what, various gray colors that the, MS Paint gave him, but uh, now he does use the eye dropper tool when he edits faces. So that's improvement. Yeah, and quality in general do be higher. Yeah. You've definitely come a long way in the last ten years. And in terms of writing, I think my writing has improved a lot uh, since. But I mean, I still enjoy watching some I earlier videos, but not every single one of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. In the past Q&A videos you've done, I always leave a question with a side note on something happening to you. If the question isn't answered, why or how does that always happen for the past couple of years? Because it's almost like I'm a wizard or something I don't know. What the hell is this question? I can't... Yeah, I couldn't figure that out myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have no idea what that is I, either. I remember one of them was like, if you don't answer this question, you don't... I, I can't remember. Oh, the... I think you were talking about, like, the... I think the last Q&A, there was, like, a... You have to choose between potato chips and another food. Otherwise... Black Cross would have been turned into something. I think wait, I'm not wait. sure. It's just I guess a little end joke with him. Hang on, let me. Um, look, I'll answer this question with a question of my own. <laughs> Why do they call it oven when you of in the cold food? No, of out no. Why? <laughs> okay. Lock, I have a question of, I'll answer right. your 
question with a question of my own as well. <laughs> oh no. Whatever happened to Candace? What? Right. Right. What would well, that be? Well, I should probably head off because it's a school night. So uh, oh, this, uh, this, this has been boy, fun, everybody. Um, I am going to be heading out. I know it's a bit abrupt, but this is just primal. Okay. I'm signing off for the night. Uh, out of even yeah. everybody. Take oh, care. Bye. 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 What a nice lad. All right. Uh, yeah, well, that's it. Well, he was a nice chap. Looks like history repeats itself. We had someone duck out last time we did a Q&A. Wait, he was a duck? <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I believe the next questions are from NBC Mikachu. Yep, they are. Alright, so question one. Wow. Mech reading off Mech's questions. Very much a double-pointing Spider-Man meme <laughs> moment. Hey, I did it last time we did the Q&A. Oh yeah, we did, didn't we? Look at Dennis stutter lad. Anyways. <laughs> Question one. Which episode of Meeple Broadway would you consider your favorite? Question also goes out to anyone else involved in the Q&A if you ever get guests on board. Well, I can't remember the number of it, but I know that one of my favorite ones to work on, at the very least, was the one where we found a penny in the talking tree. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> six. <laughs> well, yeah, episode six. That was a really big favorite. Like, here's a bit of, like, it originally just ended you know with them leaving the station and that was the ending you know while Gord was basically going I want it now daddy you know yeah and then you and I just out of top of hat and it's like but we were like hmm. you and I just made an entire subplot like, together and it's it's it was like, beautiful it the ends fact. kind of abruptly maybe we should have something past here and it just turned into Thomas Thomas was still off the rails in a previous episode, so we were like, let's do something with that. And he, we had a plenty kid with the tree. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> that was like the oh boy. Like that was so amazing. Trees. That's also the first ever debut of Harvey. The one which who I, which I I think that was one of the first wood items I got. For yeah, it, it was one of the first ones. <laughs> Yeah, and he was also the one that was obsessed with the <clears throat> boxes. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Also, it's not a specific episode, but one thing that like I made up out of nowhere that I'm kind of surprised I was never stopped on and just wound up being working worked in as a central point of episode six was the vegan bagel gag. Yeah, yes. like, I just had the vegan birthday cake thing from the wooden railway items, like on the brain for no reason while <laughs> I was recording Sir Topham Hat for episode one. And it's just, mm, and a vegan bagel sandwich. <laughs> it's, you know, and it's stuck ever since. I guess it's just yeah. the way how you said that line, it was just so hilarious. It's like, we're keeping that. Although, like, yeah. episode 6 is a favorite, but my other favorite is uh, the, the one I released last time, episode 12. Uh, I just oh, love yeah. the editing, the pacing, the fact that I finally got to use music from Disney's Robin Hood, which is one of my all-time favorite animated films, in yeah. that montage with Edward and Emily Buffer bashing. It was just a really fun episode, and I really like that. Honestly, yeah. for yeah. me, it's... For me, it's a toss-up between 6, 12, and episode 11, because we ended up getting to hear the mayor a little bit more, and how we ended up diving into his past. Somewhat. <laughs> his memories are a little bit misjogging, so there might be more silly stories. Oh, and well, yeah. yeah, I never did explain what happened to the statue. Yeah, they, w the family got that back. Honestly, I don't know why I confiscated the statue to begin with. I think my accomplice well. might have been Mr. Percival. <laughs> oh yeah, that reminds me. Uh, speaking of that episode, 
like with Gordon's voice changing in that one, like you it wonder barely if changed. A... Yeah, I know it's less gruff. It's just you know the original full gruff Gordon voice. It it was just getting too much on my throat. It's kind of like if like I did my scruff uh, for more than five minutes. It it hurts so much to do. Like, I will say with yeah. the voice we have there, I'm almost half tempted to fully switch to a new chrome type Gordon. I am very tempted. Very tempted. I, I mean, know, hey, we, we can got have it to where Gordon has a crash and that just causes him to have neo chrome all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, wait, didn't somebody in the Thomas and Friends community do a similar move with Bertram? Uh... He's called Bertram, the old warrior, because he's so brave. And then Bertram proceeded to fall and commit Sudoku. Sudoku? Oh, wow. As for my, as for my favorite Thomas Meeple Railway episode, I have narrowed it down to four choices. Are we allowed to pick episodes that haven't been made yet? Um, um sure. I would, uh, well, yes. okay. So All right, that, in that case, yeah, four choice, four choices. There is episode two, like that bit with Percy and the Dragon, where it's like, I can't hear you. What? I said I can't hear you. Come back down. You look really silly up there. Something like that. And I also love episode seven, where Diesel tried to act nice. I love the just face, the how you recreate a toned, smiling <laughs> face. Oh, which... Yeah, you Speaking of, I'll need you to draw that again for a future it. episode. Oh yeah, that shouldn't be any, that shouldn't be a problem. Trust me. And uh, Diesel's evil face right at the end. That uh, I kind of improvised that. Like the like the 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 kind face was obviously based on Tome from Agretzico, but the 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 evil laughing face, uh, I ju I just kind of winked it. <laughs> I mean, it looks then, good. And there's episode 10. I got some decent uh, lines in there. And I loved, the ho I loved editing the hot potato gag. At the yeah. End. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And oh, uh, good one. My, final, my final favorite, which technically hasn't been made yet. It's only in the planning stages. Basically, it's Diesel 10, and he keeps telling Thomas and Percy, Get out! the kiln <laughs> yeah that one no <laughs> that one i am wanting to do but i gotta find the percy at the diesel works wood set wooden railway set the only problem is is not that common and when you eventually finds it someone is asking for an arm and a leg one billion dollars <laughs> except uh. except instead of the diesel works it's the tommy oliver Oh gosh! <laughs> Tommy uh, Oliver. Uh, oh, I. Uh, I was, I was all right. Get my Tommy Oliver when I did. Okay, so question two. Similar to how Nintendo announced they would continue support Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, what other Switch games do you wish Nintendo would give similar treatment? Also, like new content added, like DLC or free updates and such. Yeah, to older games. Um, I never really thought about that. That's actually a good question. Easy, easy answer for me. Super Mario Maker 2. They killed support for that thing too dang early. Yeah, I think I'm I surprised actually agree they didn't with have. Him. I'm surprised they didn't have Amiibo support. I guess me. I, I probably would agree with the whole Mario Maker 2. It's like, yeah, I kind of wish they had like some more stuff in it. Because it seemed like when they released it, it was a big deal, and then all of a sudden, it got quietly shut down or something. Or well, not shut down, but just not supported anymore. Yeah. Alright, so... Third question, and I do not see us being on here for too terribly long, because I know how far you go into this franchise. If you had to pick a favorite Pokemon out of the eight generations what would they be technically there's nine but scarlet and violet at the time of this recording hasn't come out yet okay i don't know every single pokemon generation i will at least list down some of my favorite pokemon would that help sure 
So there's uh, Cyndaquil, Mukkip, Shuckle, Pichu, Unknown. Um, oh, oh boy. What? <laughs> That's like, Unknown is such a parallel between you and me. Unknown's actually my least favorite. <laughs> Well, I just love, like, the airy mystery design of, of how it's, like, you know, its own alphabet. And, um, uh, plus also the Entei movies one is one of my favorites, so. Oh, don't get me wrong. The lore behind it's brilliant. It's just, mechanically, it's garbage. All right. Anyone else want to answer this? Because I did say that this these questions do go out to anyone else on board. All right. Uh, I, don't, I don't know Pokemon, no, really. So. Yeah, me neither. I'm not that into. I'm not really I, that into. There is one thing I can say about Pokemon, but based on the actions of the person I'd be uh, impersonating, maybe it's best we just move on from me. I will say I used to watch Pokemon back then, but now I grow grew tired of it because it never ends. Well, with it being a multi-billion franchise, it's bound to still keep going yeah i suppose so it's it's like the biggest one of nintendo's biggest giants in fact it's the if i recall the highest grossing multimedia franchise in the world oh yeah i agree with you there it's like oh boy we got to make tons of money (laughs) well you're not wrong there money all right, no, now no. it's Lachlan's turn. All right. All right. Got. All right. These questions are from Preston Does Stuff. Yes, I'm sure he does. Question one. Have you seen The Owl House or Amphibia? If so, which do you like more? I'll answer this real quick first. I've seen both of them. I love them, but I personally think I like Amphibia just a little bit more. But they're both good shows. I haven't seen either. Yeah, oh, I, oh, I haven't seen any of the shows, but I love the ghost and Molly McGee. So I've seen uh, the shows. I'm a lazy. Yep. I'm a or lazy. At least uh, most of one show and not so much the other. I haven't seen any of those three shows. Neither the two mentioned or Molly McGee. Um, uh, uh, Molly McGee, I definitely want to watch, but I can I can speak on behalf of Our House and Amphibia. I am only slightly less than halfway through season one of Amphibia, which is making me the big sad because it's ending this weekend, but also the fandom is slightly scaring me, so I'm kind of weighing in my options at the moment. But Owl House, I've seen all of up to this point. Amphibia, I want to definitely watch more because I do love how silly it gets. I, I like cartoons that are fun and silly, although it gets very dark from what I've been spoiled on Twitter because, God forbid, I try to watch stuff for a cartoon without being spoiled. Our house. So it's like Moral Oral, a show um, that's really zany but gets really dark as you get into the show. I don't know if uh, I could say that because Moral Oral makes me the big sad. So I'd say, I seen... like from what I've heard, like, like probably uh, Gravity Falls is the more apt comparison in regards to the tone shifts. Yeah, it's like, and it's on the same network because it was all, it was kind of, it's been kind of like, yeah. you know, we're yeah. kind of at the tail end of the adventure, gravity, universe, time falls. The 2010s thing. Boom. Adventure, universe, like time the, falls. Like the, the ser- <laughs> like everyone wants to be Avatar or Gravity Falls and they want that serialized pie and some got it good, some were Star versus in the Force of Evil. But I like, I like Owl House. I think Owl House... Oh. It's very fun. I like how dark it gets. I I like how it kind of deconstructs various tropes. I think the pace. I definitely prefer season two pa- two spacing compared not just for like that like Owl House, but also a lot of serialized shows because I think a lot of them either kind of end up kind of going all over the place or they settle on too much filler and less plot, I or know. like they kind of go kind of you know a, kind of every which way. So it's kind of like good. I. I it's hard to say which one I'd like more. I do like Amphibia being very like being a little more silly and cartoony, but I'm like I, you know I, I haven't watched it all the way through, so I gotta I gotta preserve judgment. So I I thought I, like, I thought I like, versus was okay. It was it Me started too. off great. It started off great. Had a great mm-hmm. third season beginning. Then season four happened. Yeah, and yeah. it's like 
I haven't even watched it, and I can tell you from what I've seen. I watched a little bit of Star Wars vs. the Forces of Evil, and I thought they were pretty interesting. And Yeah, I thought I never... so too. I thought Star vs. was a good show, but I'll be honest, the season 4 finale did kind of kill any hope I had for rewatching. Yeah. I'm sorry. Honestly, if I, had, if I had to choose between, like, for shows that had subpar endings, between that and Gumball, I'd probably pick Star over it. Well, at least Gumball's getting a movie. And a reboot. Yeah. That's more of a revival, I think. Oh, but, guys, mm. we're missing... Oh, okay, so I think at the end... Okay, to answer your question, the better show is... DuckTales 2017. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I you know, I, I, when you're, you know, when you're considering how Tangled ended up going, as much as I love it, I also need to finish DuckTales. And we we'll also, we'll also probably finish getting through the questions. I'm realizing we're getting really off track. Yeah, yeah, we got, yeah, we got two let's sides continue. Track. And that, Dan, Daniel, you, so, oh, yeah, this was Daniel his question. <laughs> Oh, right. Um, well, I haven't really seen either Our House or Amphibia. I have been thinking I want to watch Amphibia because I've heard a lot of good stuff. That and Bill Farmer voices one of the main characters. So it's like, I love Bill Farmer. Yeah. He's really nice. I saw him at a Fanboy Expo years ago. And, uh, we were just talking for like a good five minutes. Uh, and he was just really friendly guy. So Doesn't Kermit yeah. make a cameo in that show too? He does. Yeah, he does. He play voices um, some host, I think, of some tournament. I can't remember. I saw the clip of where Matt Vogel did his uh, Kermit impression. I'm still having right. a hard time getting used to him as Kermit. <laughs> Let's, all right, next question. What is your favorite Mario game? Oh, hey, something I actually do know. da 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 But uh, it's a... Uh, it's really hard because there's a lot of great Mario games. Like, I love Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, 64, Odyssey, Galaxy 2, uh, Mario Party 2, um, a lot of twos I just realized. So, uh, it's kind of hard for me to really, not, like, if you had to tell me if I had to choose one Mario game to play my entire life, uh, that would be like choosing my favorite, ba my favorite child. I can't do it! I didn't know you were a father. I got a baby Grover. <laughs> I think wow. that's the first time wow. we've acknowledged baby him in this entire podcast. Someone fetch me a nipple. What? <laughs> okay. That's a Yu-Gi-Oh! Wow. bridge joke. Oh. Yes, yeah, so okay. I know you got confused there, Tyler. It's like, don't don't worry. It's just one of those thingamajigs. I will, say the, I will say the only Yu-Gi-Oh! A bridge parody I watched was that music vi music parody video based on of uh, Lady Gaga's uh, oh. bad romance. <laughs> oh, the level <laughs> it's about, it's about, the Yes, pants. that I loved it. <laughs> What's in the name of Roz going on? Why would you remove my trousers? <laughs> All right, so so, so your fa favorite Mario game? Just to reiterate. Uh, okay, I'll let's. My five top favorites in no particular order. <laughs> order: <laughs> Super Mario Galaxy 2, <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Super Mario 64, Mario Party 2. There. Yay! <laughs> Third question. Cool. All right, question three. Who Actually, is your I think, main? I uh, think Mystery Man was going to say something. Oh, go on. Yeah, I was gonna say with the favorite Mario game thing. Would be no question. Galaxy One and Galaxy Two. And Galaxy Two got done dirty. It should have been on 3D All Stars. And also, I do not like 64 and Sunshine. Those are my hot takes of the day. I, I don't I, care much for Sunshine either, so don't worry. I'm, I'm with you there. And I can understand can, why some people don't like 64. Consider uh, me a in my favorite's yeah. Odyssey. Oh, oh no. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here as someone who grew up with 64 and Sunshine. Oh no! <laughs> My whole life is a lie. Nobody loves 64 anymore. Uh, for, for, I will say Double Dash 
Double Dash for life. Greatest Mario game. I will I will not accept any rebuffs about this. I can be cancelled on Twitter.com over this best Mario Kart ever. And you cannot argue with the facts. Hey, He's Mario Kart is, is, I mean, He's Mario Kart Deluxe is good. You cancel you for having hair instead. No, because you know they don't I'm like hair. hair. I love having hair. Okay, Milan, you legit sound like you're about to walk out the room. <laughs> no. That's all part of the game. I like I like Mario Kart and Mario Kart 64 while saying that. Okay, third question before we all lose it. Right, 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 right. Question three. Question three. Who is your main in Smash Bros? Mr. Game of Watch. Oh, Should nice. You, I don't play Smash anymore. Neener, neener. I used to play Smash on the Wii U with my family. <laughs> I don't have a Switch because I feel like I would play it for two seconds and then immediately go back to Twitter. But I, <laughs> I would always main Bowser on the Wii U. Oh. Mm -hmm. I only played Smash once at a friend's house when I was visiting the UK. I don't even remember who I was maining. In fact, I don't even remember if I was playing. Okay, so Probably as someone like who owns just, Ultimate, uh... I ended up playing as Kirby. Like, and I tried other characters too. It's. I mean, I'm glad I have the game in my collection, but I, I don't think it's my thing. I honestly sold my copy of Ultimate on Craigslist a while back. I just. I wound up not liking it. Uh, I don't play. I'd overstayed its welcome, and I'm not really a multiplayer guy most of the time, so it really had no value for me beyond that. Yeah, I mean, I still, uh, I, I still have my copy of Ultimate. I don't play it. Uh, it's one of those games where if I have some friends of mine coming over, because they, because whenever I ask them what game <sighs> they want to play, and they're like. We want to play Ultimate. It's like okay, that's fun, because they are they because when my friends and I play Smash, everyone's equal. When we all play Mario Kart Eight, I beat them. So it's like you know you gotta find a game that everyone is equal to. And then <laughs> there's Mario Party. That's where friendships oh, yeah. come to die. Hello, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that game. I love those games. All right, who's next? I guess. Um... Uh, Mystery Man's next. And coming live to us from wherever the heck this is on planet Earth, these next two questions come to us live from Union Pacific 1982 Productions. What is your favorite episode from the first five seasons of Thomas, the choo-choo train that stuck Henry in the tunnel and left him to die for 20 zillion years until the heat death of a universe. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. That's a very what? good description. Uh, that. That, should, way of putting it? that should be a Kotaku article, and that whole title must be on there. So... But wait, is it wanting me to choose one episode from the first five seasons, or...? That's right! Ha ha ha! One! One <laughs> episode! Are you mad? No, same person, <laughs> just pick one! One! <laughs> one. Go, okay, I'll try, my, I'll try, but it's not an easy task, because... I mean, I know I've done the favorite episodes from each season <coughs> years ago on a demo show, um, but... If I had to choose one episode, I can't do it, man. I just can't pick one. Going solely off of what I can remember, because I'll be honest, I, I need to get off my lazy ass and do a proper rewatch of Thomas. It's been too long. But yeah. solely going off of what I can remember, like pretty much anything from season five is a really good contender for me. But if I had to narrow it down solely based off of what I can remember, like, this will probably, like, if you ask me my question, I'll probably, my answer will probably change multiple times until I do an actual rewatch. But based solely off of what I can remember, yet to twist my arm, uh, probably Thomas Percy and Old Slow Coach. I was actually thinking oh, yeah. that episode a few seconds ago. 
I think mine would have to be Cranky Bugs. Hmm. Mainly just because I have a special place. Like, either that or Toad Stands By, because I have a special place. Well, not sp Stands By, Busy Going Backwards, because I have a special place with the VHS that both of those were tied on to. Yeah. Actually, speaking, this has nothing to do with the question, but I have thought about putting Old Slow Coach in Thomas Meeple Railway, and if I did, I would actually want to, I would love to try to get my mom to voice as Old Slow Coach. I just think that would be a nice little in uh, reference for me, you know? Aww. Aww. Pretty nice. Yeah. But, Beautiful. Uh, still, like, Old Slow Coach. Since that's the episode I'm thinking of, and that's what Mystery Man was thinking of, I'll pick that because that is a good story. And Oslo Coach is, in my opinion, the most criminally underrated Rolling Stock character in the okay. franchise. There was nothing old or slow about Coach. The fact that you, the fact you said you'd try to get your mom to voice it. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Who are you people? <laughs> Who left? Who let the studio audience in? Go shoot, shoot, get away! I get claustrophobic easily. Uh, imagine being claustrophobic. Ah, the claps, not the claps. <laughs> anyway, let us stop clapping and get on to yapping. Our right. second and final question from this dear gentleman who has a oh, train for his profile picture, which is very it? epic and valid. Thoughts on? Tugs, the boat show that failed completely and utterly miserably in ratings and marketing and practically led to clear water, shutting the f*** down. Oh, I love Salt and Sugar House. That's an amazing show. You let Thomas get to season five, so. Theodore oh, Tug yeah? looks better. There, I said it. Hey, ma'am, thank you. That is, okay, I like Tugs. But Field of Tugboat, I have more of a connection with. Um, and I'm not just saying it because there's more episodes. Cause, just because uh, Tugs is good, but it depends on, like, do you like your show to be more action-y or your show to be more character-based, where it's both exactly. based on the emotions. And I just love... I wish Field of Tugboat got more recognition. Like, Tugs is great. I, I kind of wish, though, that we got more... Um, like, I wish the Tugs Trust would show the scripts more and the, the stuff that they have and take better care of the props. In but, other words, yeah. stop being stingy yeah. and yeah, this respect is, your items. Yeah, this is a public service announcement. The Star Tugs Trust are greedy bastards. Let me be got, let, 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 here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, 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 try, I try not... I'm trying really hard to not step on the star tugs trust toes because i worry someday they might be like okay you know what no one gets to look at the models now and then they just throw them out out of like petty revenge or something honestly i actually... their toes until they're ground into sawdust didn't because, you have a run-in with like... one of the people involved lachlan <laughs> Oh yeah, I did, but this is Delmar's dream. I'm, I'm, I don't want to be, I don't want to make myself the focus of it. Fair enough. That's the whole yeah, of the anyway, reveals. Anyway, yeah, back on actual topic, because yeah, I derailed it. That was my bad. Uh, Tugs, yeah, it's, it is a good show, but like, it has undeniably aged poorly in a couple areas. Like, definitely easily the biggest one, Easy Gomez. There's nothing wrong with Izzy Gomez, man. Oh, caramba, yeah, Well, hey, to be fair, at least they didn't go the, uh, I can't believe I was saying this, the blackface route, you know? I showed no, it to I my... No, no, I know, but... I showed it... Izzy Gomez to my Hispanic friend, man, and he wasn't so much as faced. You know what, say what you will about Izzy Gomez or Tugs aging poorly. Tugs? Came out years before Underground Ernie, and yet I think Tugs aged better than Underground Ernie did. No, no, I agree. No yeah. doubt. No like, doubt. Underground um, Ernie from, I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's just outright bad. And it's like, um, I like, realize that Izzy I isn't a bad concept, but yeah, it. As executed in the show, it aged kind of poorly, in my opinion. 
to, oh. qu to quote Milan, at least it isn't Mighty Express. Oh God! I, I, speaking of me, I I realize I completely forgot to answer the last question. Oh no! Answer too many. There's a lot of good Thomas episodes. I cannot pick one child. I but for my thoughts on Tugs are very mixed. I think it is a very. I think in most areas, it's a very well written show. It is amazingly produced. I'm. It. I love the storytelling aspect of it. I love kind of. It's like it's. It's such an interesting series, but there is good reason it did not exactly end up becoming a big hit compared to Theodore. Tugs is... <coughs> oh, man. Sorry, I, I got a dry spot there for a sec. Fine. Tugs is kind of weird to talk think about because it's basically like... Oh, man. I kind of... There's like... I don't know what kind of category to put it in, but it's kind of like the same category of Tangled, where it's kind of like you have this you know, team slash IP or whatever that kind of, where it's kind of like, hey, we can do kind of whatever we want. And there's the yin and the yang of like holding back a little bit so you don't go too crazy. Because if you go too crazy, then you end up being borderline fan fiction or just like so something absolutely bonkers. And Tugs is kind of like, it's these cute smiling tugboats. All the buoys have faces and stuff like that. But it's also a serious 1920s Period drama with contract wars, actual characters dying, and munitions disasters, and quarantines, and, you know, characters wanting to literally die, just like... Speaking of quarantine, you mentioned Tangled. Can I just mention how 2020 f***ed over Tangled? I mean, the show was already kind of in deep water, considering it was basically a, a really well-written fanfiction. It takes place in a land called Corona. Oh yeah. He, oh, oh brother. Wait, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's interesting because it's like people give Theodore uh, pardon pardon me, maybe I don't know if this word would get sensitive, but it's like people give Theodore shit because like, oh it's more kitty and all that stuff. But it's like the success is more clear. The the guy is still touring around. I saw him a couple weeks ago up in Hamilton, his new crib. He's still, like, people were there. Like, people were talking about him. People were like, oh, my God, it's Theodore. And, like, man, they brought him all the way from Halifax. People know the guy. People still talk about him. He, like, he has transcended beyond the TV show. And that is the power of a good character or show. Tugs, At least... Tugs is, forever, Tugs is forever a cult thing. Something that, you know, the odd parent or kid will know. But mo yeah. the majority of the audience is Thomas nerds or absolute nerds like myself. At least... <laughs> Theodore got a life-size version of himself. Yeah. I would love, oh. like, I would lo love to go to Canada one day to m meet the actual props and Fiodo too. That would be amazing. But I also am afraid of flying, and if I did a cross-country road trip, it would take forever. Aww. Oh, it's not too bad. I'd probably... probably just spooky, but... I'd probably hug the boat. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it only thing is, like, the props and the boat are in two different places. But, it's like, Halifax is still a pretty good place to visit. That's where all the props are. You know, cool things are still up in Halifax. Yeah. Yeah, like, I would... Yeah, I wouldn't mind visiting that place to see Theodore in person. The, and then give, give it a big hug as well and say, thank you for being, being part of my childhood, big fella. Yeah, it, yeah, you and I are on the same page, Tyler. Uh -huh. so, so like, I think I'm going to go for now. All right. right. Okay then. All right. See All you right. Right. I don't provide yeah, some goofs and gaffs and don't read some questions. All right. See you. Right. See All you right. Then. And remember, never eat yellow snow. So says <laughs> Richard the Tender Engine from Carson's <laughs> Video Workshops. I thought that was all. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye. I, I legit thought that was his bulgy impression. <laughs> oh, all right, so let's see what's that. Oh, wow, we've got a lot of questions. we got to actually speed this up a little bit. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. uh, we'll try uh, to at least. Who, who, who's next for reading the questions? You. Okay. <clears throat> These following two questions come from Old Engine Well-Known Productions. Uh, that's a bit of a mouthful of a name. Try saying that three times fast. Very good user, I, I presume, though. I'm not Number going to. The first question we have. What Thomas line would you use if Thomas Wood or Wooden Railway wasn't available? Take along. Yes! Uh, okay. 
I mean, I like the take along engines. It's like the best uh, die cast range. But I also probably will choose Tomy and Playwell because they have a good variety of characters and such, but it depends what happens, you know? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I think Tomy has a better variety of track and sets, but Take Along has a slightly better variety of characters. Yeah. 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 Well, I never That's... collected much of that these days, but I do know a friend of mine from the UK who does collect Take Along as well. Oh, cool. really? Oh, you'd have to acquaint me with the guy. Actually, Ashley it's a it's a woman and a friend of mine. Oh. You know Rosie the Cutie in 1995? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yep, that's her. I completely forgot she was from the UK. <laughs> it's fine. So next question we have, number 2, favorite branch line. Um hmm. the Thomas branch line. Mine was going to be a toss up between Thomas and Ducks. Like which style? Like what from what season do you I, prefer? Or, I suppose it's general. Oh, well, I mean, for me, I guess just because I'm more familiar with the Thomas branch line more than I do like with Ducks or Edwards. Would would Ryan be considered part of Ducks branch line? I mean, it's technically an extension, so. Yeah, because it goes from, it goes because I think Harvard is part of the line as well. Okay. Yeah, it's like I think it's like Arlsberg, okay. and then it goes right up to Harwick. So, okay. Let's see, but it's like uh, for me, I'm kind of like, you know, I'm I'm kind of like uh, it's hard to choose because there's a lot of really fun locations with like from every era. But I really, I guess, like kind of off the top of my head, I really like like this is I was actually thinking of this before the Arlsberg talk kind of came in with Duck's Branch Line. I do like how Duck's Branch Line in the CG era came out with like. Bluffs Cove and especially Arlesboro Harbor and you know Arlesboro West. It's like it's a really fun variety of locations to get. And also, I am a sucker for seaside or waterside locations. Is it because I, of Ariel? No, funny enough, it's like I actually live like I I I've mentioned this on my videos and stuff, so it's not really major. But I, I live in Windsor, which is right next to Detroit, so we're right by the river. So oh. we're like. Like, so pretty close to where I live, it, like, there's, like, Marie, like a lot closer when I was living with my with my dad, it was, and, like, my parents and stuff, well, technically, my dad's house that used to be, you know, the whole family house before things happened, there's, oh. like, a marina, that, oh, it's nothing too, too serious, but it's, like, there was, there's a, like, there's three marinas lined up on the side, and it's, like, right by the river, and there's bike trails and stuff, and it's just, like, you know, I always had, like, it, I think that's partially why, like, Tugs, Theodore, and the harbor stuff in Thomas connected really well, because it's, like, Having that and then being that and kind of like, you know, having the docks and stuff, right? It's so close and in biking distance, it's kind of like, like, it, it's, it, it, get, it really sparks my imagination a lot and kind of like, and I think, and like seeing Theodore Tugboat in my hometown for about a night is still one of the most surreal things. Like, it's literally like a dream come true. Okay, so uh, if the fact you mentioned the river and tugs, like, a thing that made me kind of question because it's supposed to set place in America. Would that, in, would they be in the central part of North America? Because I know that there are some episodes that take place upriver. Um, that's a good question. It's like, I think what I'm trying to think what it was. I think with tugs, I know it was set like supposed to be like San Francisco and stuff. So. Oh, so it's like on the Pacific Northwest. San yeah. Francisco's California. Yeah, but I'm curious about how they had their act. They had British accents. I mean, were they like bought from the UK to work there? If I, well, I, I, I just, I just blame that on the place that the studio was set in. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah I Probably. suppose so. Plus, I think it. I think the voices are close enough to brooklyn yeah. accents yeah well it's just my thing it's just my curiosity what it, what it would be like because then they would I... it would make much sense okay i think you're up next tyler all right now this one is from abbey road fan 94 j a p j p i'm not sure what that means but anyways jenny question one. okay that that could work i don't know Anyways, question one. 
Favorite Thomas characters to voice? It's a toss-up between two. One is Henry, obviously, because this is just the type of voice that I like to do. And then Scruff, just because I can really do his voice well, even though if I do it for a long time. Like, when I did the um, uh, Bev mm -hmm. Bighead as Lust from Full Metal Alchemist, which was a fun video, but I did all the lines in one day. And my throat was so sore for the next couple of days after that. It was horrible, but I still like to I still like to do my scrub voice time to time, but only when it's necessary. Like that I Twitter mean. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which well, I wonder, must... do I have any new ones for the Twitter that I need to work or just just since it came oh, to my that's, head? That's still ongoing? Well, there was some people that commented on it. I think no one else has, so I oh, can take a breather. That just, that just gives me some ideas. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Although I might do one for Henry next, uh, so that might be coming up soon. I will say, I think your Henry voice was suitable for him. In honestly, your... honestly, I think you rival Joey Turner in regards to my headcanon for a Henry voice. Yeah, but at least you're not a... You're not as much of a goofball as his Henry was. <laughs> My point is, is that, like, that voice minus the fact that it's Ed. Yeah. <laughs> or oh, yes. Billy like, from... I like uh, butter toast. Or Billy from the uh, the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But yeah, I do, I do pretty... But yeah, because I've... It's, because I've been <laughs> wanted to try doing impersonate a stupid henry i just do as what ed did in ed ed and eddie so yeah that's pretty much it about it you know, it's, kind of, it's kind of funny that i ended up as the voice of harvey in the long run because back when i was trying to be a wannabe of joey turner miss oliver and blossom and the like on flipnote studios i ended up animating characters and for some reason i decided to make harvey the dumb one <laughs> i see why Harvey? Yeah, anyway, yeah. question two. Favorite wooden slash wood items? There's a couple of ones. Um, I guess from the Thomas Wood. Uh, um, hmm. Oh gosh, I'm stuck on Thomas Wood. Well, Kenji I like because that's like one of the last of the Thomas Wood and it since it's a Japan exclusive. So I'm glad I got him oh. before prices got way high and then from oh, the brother. original wooden railway that one's gonna be hard because there's a lot of good ones and there's even yeah. some items that i really want to get like there's this um i forgot what the name is it's like a uh, sword or clock tower that has like a oh the clock tower drawbridge um somewhere yeah it's uh, I forget. There's two different ones. Uh, or are you talking about the one that's paired up with the Sam set? Not the one with the Sam set. This was a separate destination that was released back oh. in um, Learning Curve's heyday. And the last question from Abbey Road is the ten favorite Enterprising Engines episodes. I have not watched his stuff in a long time, but there was one episode that I really like, and it's the one where, Stan uh, I forgot the name of the episode, but it's the one where Stanley is contemplating, like, questioning about, like, you know, um, I forgot the context, but, like, Alien Bird says something, and it makes Stanley wonder about uh, lo having, like, an existential crisis, and yeah. Edward comes along and helps boost his confidence up. Uh, that episode oh. is just really good, and I really like it. I forgot the name of it, but I think it was, like, his season one finale at the time, like, back in 2012, 2013. Okay. I thought you were going to mention one of the episodes you were in, like, say, Mavis and the Tornado. Well, I don't just want to I... pick that because uh, that I voice scrub. Like, that that would be kind of like, you know, um, what what's the word called? Um, Honestly, I really got to thank Enterprising Engines for making a series, because if I not ran into that, I probably wouldn't have ran into you. So, he's a good lad. I would like to have him guest on a video again, but it depends what happens, because I say he's busy he's as a always. Busy lad. No, it's understandable what he does in life. Yeah. 
Oh, my next one! I think this I think is, was, uh... Yeah, oh, this your, is me! Your turn. Yeah, it's your turn now. Wow, Bava, yeah. okay. Uh, BW Production is asked, What would you say is the best video you made so far? I cannot answer this, because... I mean, there's some videos that I like, and it's really hard for me to choose my favorite. I know I made a playlist on my channel of, like, the best of Mullen Studios, so those are, like, the ones that I, I, I'm absolutely proud of. Even though I haven't updated it in quite a long while, so it's like, um, oh crap, there's 72 videos. Like, oh dear, I don't make me chills! Uh, <laughs> man, but it's so easy, it's the Sodor Search and Rescue Center Fire Rescue Firehouse Review set. Oh yeah, also, I did that. Uh, there's also the collab <laughs> videos that you have up there, like my cover of Worthless. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was a fun project. You were the TV. Yes, it was me, the TV. I did. Oh. I prevented my friends from dying. And I I'm was realizing I, I'm not doing the TV voice. I was, I was slowly going into Mr. Ding from Doug. <laughs> Hello, Douglas. <laughs> do you want to check out my? <laughs> do you want to check out my white face troublesome truck? That's right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it was very expensive, Doug. I paid two thousand dollars on eBay. <laughs> she was told, a turtle told me that it was very expensive. Uh, okay, Mr. Well, Dink, Mr. Works. Dink, that was just a print error for, for like that was printed in the thousands. Da oh, well, I'm, I'm gonna add to my army of big Baba trucks. Okay, Milan, do the <laughs> do the first line, but as you as is Mr. as Mr. Dink. Which line? <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen, appliances thing. Either that or the, or the or the carcinogenic vacuums. Oh, uh, Douglas, listen. Uh, those vacuums were found to be carcinogenic. Big, big tumors on those rats. You, listen, I got I got photos to prove it. And I don't even want to look at them. They were very expensive to get rid of. <laughs> I can't remember Casey, but sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's just like, it's like that car, but it's like, it's goddamn Roger. Like, hey, funny, I came from Casey, Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Patty! I was in the Indy 500! <laughs> <laughs> Quail, Man's not, Quail Man's not gonna save the day this time. I once oh. took a hex into a wedding, Doug! Oh. <laughs> I'm hey, in Doug. danger! No. <laughs> hey, Doug, listen. I took a man to a graveyard. I beg your oh, pardon, but, no. it's quite a, but it's quite hard enough just living with the stuff I've learned. Oh, it's brother. funny, because that's the one I hit the high note on. <laughs> Gosh! Oh, oh, brother! I swear to God, we we're gonna spend we're just turning into an improv session. We're trying. Anyway, I, I hope people have right. like four hours of free time to spend. <laughs> if, we, if we need to, we could split this into two separate episodes. I mean, we did that with the. Uh, one of them, like it was three parts, cause my goodness, just oh. <laughs> See, I actually liked them. I actually liked the ones that were multi-part, cause it it's all the more fun. Yeah. Plus, yeah. also, we all get to laugh and make weird jokes at each other and yeah. question our sanity as we speak. <laughs> I'm so glad that I have you guys as friends. Yeah. Friends. If I if I was in person with all of you, I'd probably just give you all a big hug. Hmm. And then we go parade the town and cause chaos. It's like, run away! We got five, six crazy madmen on the loose! Delmar's the one driving. Can <laughs> we just move on to the next question? Oh, right, right. Uh, yes, right, see. Right, uh, right. What are your favorite uh, movies? The, uh, yes, see. There's Paddington 2, Mighty Python, and Holy Grail. The first Sonic the Hedgehog movie, Nightmare Before Christmas, Disney's Robin Hood, at least name five. So there you go. Uh, nope. choose. And then the last one from BW Productions, any favorite TV shows? The one I'm really happy to get back into is the original Fraggle Rock. I absolutely love it. Um, then of course, the, the, well, technically the theatrical, theatrical shorts, but I'm still going to count the original Looney Tunes. Uh, and of course, Nef Netflix shows like uh, Hilda, We Like Them on Karu, all good shows. 
that I talked about. But anyway, um, okay, right. next one. Fire Dust. Go to whoever's next. That would be Lachlan. Oh, okay. What are your... Okay, so Fire Dust asks, what are your thoughts on 2020's Sonic the Hedgehog movie, and have you seen the sequel? I nope. haven't seen the sequel yet, but the first one... I surprisingly loved it a lot more than I thought. It's one of those movies that I can watch over and over again and never get bored. I just absolutely love, like, uh, Ben Schwartz's uh, voice for, uh, what, what's so funny? I'm sorry, it's just one of the questions to age like milk. Huh? We'll get to that when we get to that, but right now, Sonic movie. Oh, right, but yeah, um... And I love seeing Jim Carrey. He makes an excellent Robotnik. Uh, and it, was just, uh, yeah. it was just a fun movie. One that I had a lot of entertainment with. And one of the most recent films that uh, I am really glad they turned the movie. Plus, um, the, I love the animation of Sonic. He looks amazing. Why is Choice keeping Tails as current actress? Indeed. Yeah, and also a wise choice to like change the design of sonic like how did that original design get past the test audience stage i feel like honestly, that was a like, hoax like they honestly, purposely like, did that personally i i wouldn't I think mind it to have seen like a honestly i wouldn't have mind to have seen the alternative of where they kept the designs but then there would be a sonic 2 just to see how things would have gone. Yeah. Yeah. A lot I mean, they kind say... of they kind of made it out to be as if there would have been a Sonic two going off that ending. I think the the Tails ending was thrown in at the last minute, but it's kind of like, oh. which I think makes it even better. It's kind of like imagine it was just like, like just like Jim Carrey, and that's it. It's like oh, he looks like Robotnik now. Yeah, but Although... ugly. I don't believe. That it was a hoax. I don't think they intended to. A lot of people say, "Oh, they were going to use the new design all this time. The old design was just a hoax." Well, the delay of the film and some of the cancelled merch says otherwise. Not to mention the animation company that was working on it shut down. Well, the division of it specifically. Yeah. But it's and, like, honestly, it's kind of like, it's, it's this, be- these people run on Kopi. I'm just like, guys, it was just a marketing campaign. It's, it was totally just like a fake thing. Bullshit. <laughs> That's a lot of marketing budget that went <laughs> because of all that. They had to repay certain items. Ju- and it's like, you can very clearly tell it was like the old design. Yeah, and that it is what, it is because of the son. it is because of the early Sonic design and the Cats movie coming out the way it did and maybe all engines go that whenever i hear someone say that something tested well with audiences i immediately think here we got a giant pizza if you write on the card that you liked what you just saw you can have pizza holy crap oh okay that was my phone and it's literally from someone named name and address withheld second question what are your thoughts on Super Chris Pratt Bros coming out this Christmas and already? Uh, <laughs> I think we've already thought about this. Yeah, we did. That and yeah. um, now it's moved to like what a spring release or? I don't know. Yeah. Let's uh, let's move forward. All right, then Ooh. next one, go. John the Cool One Thousand One asks, "What's your favorite episode of Meeple Railway?" So we already answered this. Uh, yeah. Favorite characters from other favorite shows. For, oh, from my other favorite show, so from Fraggle Rock, uh, my spirit Fraggle is Wembley. Just because I love Wembley, he's his. My, a lot of my favorite episodes from for Fraggle Rock comes from him, just because I can relate to him and the Wembleyness. Um, and then from Hilda, I really love uh, uh, David. Uh, particularly like in season one with David, like even though he is a scaredy cat, he has this bravery, like in the episode where Hilda's like facing a nightmare, uh, David's like, I can't yet do this, uh, cause he's defend, like, I just love his bravery, and then um, you see, what else, I'll try to mention one more show. I know Neptunia, it's Vert. 
Uh, well, kind of like back and forth, I guess. Maybe, uh, I, I kind of like liking Plutia more, considering the fact that uh, she just seems like someone that I can, like, just, uh, like, if I'm feeling down, just to have someone who's a slow talker and so just someone who's just extremely friendly. Yeah. Even though okay. I can't say I the same for him CPU form, but regardless. Thoughts on Railfan number one in his series, Tales of the NW Rails. I've never what? seen that. That would mean Milan's next. Uh, it's my turn. Trademan352 asks the following two questions. Number one, favorite Azumanga Dio character. Okay, uh, for those who don't know, that's just an anime that has a bunch of, uh, that's just really hilarious. Absolutely love it. Um, I actually had two favorite characters that I really like. One uh, is Osaka, who, who, who's sort of not the brightest of the bunch of the characters, and ha and in the U.S. dub, she speaks like with a, a Houston, with a Houston accent, and whenever she's on, she's just hilarious. And the same thing could go for the teacher Yukari, the homeroom teacher. She's an absolute bonkers. Like whenever she's in her car, her driving is just, oh my goodness, <laughs> she becomes a speed demon. Okay, out of curiosity, that show that was mentioned, is this the one that you ended up using for question mark five? The one that had the cooking. Yes, bits that's like, where Chia Chan she's cooking. Yeah, that's that's the one. That's, wow. Uh, the show. <laughs> that is too scarily accurate. I I need Grover <laughs> right now. I need to properly watch it. Melly, Melly. I need to properly watch it. My most most of my exposure has been through Gaibu Chan YouTube poops, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but Tomo and Yukari are extremely fun from what I have seen. I have seen a couple episodes in full. They they are amusing and they are funny. Okay. Next up, quest and the final question from Train Man three five two is: Have you played Team Fortress two? I have not. Then again, I don't usually play PC games. Like I'm on my computer a lot already by making videos. So by having games on there, it's like I don't, I don't want to make my hobby become like what I am 100% on all the time. It's like sometimes I like to get on the TV and watch my shows. W wait, that's the same thing. Dang it! <laughs> okay, while we're on that topic, I'm, I'm gonna be upfront about this. That's the main reason, like, Minecraft is probably the closest I think I'll ever get to PC gaming, because I feel like if I were to ever dip my foot into something like, say, Steam and the Menagerie games that's on there, it's going to taint my views on console gaming. Because when it comes to PC gaming, it's as good as what you're playing it on. Yeah. Mm. I'm kind of sitting here like I I can't say the funny memes about Team Fortress 2 because I have not played it, but I know the funny memes are plenty. I oh, tried. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hit you. Oh wait, yeah, I did. <laughs> as for me, you as I did to be not dead. You are dead. Not a big surprise. Are you dead? As and for that's me, that's why I lost my medical license. Right, let... Sorry. <laughs> As I was saying, I did try to de I did try to play Team Fortress 2 on uh, on Steam on my new Mac, but unfortunately it wouldn't let me for unknown reason. I was like, "What? Come on!" Apparently, that game turns 15 this year, right? Uh, Wait, it's 15 years old? Yeah. Almost. That gum. Yeah. Anyways, it now it's my turn to answer the question. And it is from Joseph Cavagnaro, or Cavagnaro, excuse me. Cavagnaro. Okay, that works. Forgive me for pronouncing your last name wrong. But anyways, here it is. Question one. What was your inspiration for making Sir Topham Hatt obsess over vegan bagels in Thomas Meeple Railway? I think Chris actually mentioned that earlier. 
Yeah, he, yeah, okay. I think he's the one to that. mention. It. Although he did use that joke in uh, Fast as a Mallard. Uh, yeah, all right then. So I, just, I guess I just okay. figured that was an Easter egg. Okay, so I guess we won't worry about that. Yeah. Question two: yeah. How many anime plushies do you own? I don't own any. Well, does Pokemon count? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I oh. own a Pichu and a Popaloo. Popaloo. Oh, nice. Yeah, those are the only ones I have. Uh, I have thought about Game Boy because uh, I accidentally done what I am guilty of always doing and going online browsing and <laughs> saw Impulse that they had just like they have plushes for almost every Pokemon. Uh, oh, you you encountered the sitting cuties line. I I think I can't remember. It was on the official Pokemon Center shopping place. I think that's and, the only thing I could think of that's selling currently plushies in the likeness of Kadabra. Yeah, because mm. like they have so many. It's like how many different ones? Like, in fact, I was thinking there was gonna be a lot of Pikachu variants, which there was, but. I found more of, like, diff all the different types of Pokemon. Like, they had... I think the evening officer had, like, all the alphabets of the unknown, including the exclamation mark, which I didn't even know that was even a version. Yep, that's Sitting Cuties. Otherwise known as Pokemon Fit in Japan, because they're meant to fit into really tight spaces. Hmm. Oh, so hmm. that means they could fix the hole in the wall. Cool. I'm fixing <laughs> a hole together. So, wait, you knew that there were... So, you... Didn't know that there was an exclamation point form for unknown, but you knew about the question mark. Yeah, like I remember seeing the question mark, but the exclamation point, uh, I didn't really know. But then again, it's like I haven't really done. Yeah, also, were... I apologize if there's a lot of squeaking. My chair is just very squeaky, so. Oh, don't worry. You're not the only one with a bit of a noisy chair. Yeah. Mm. So, okay, last one from Joseph. And the last one is, what are your thoughts of the 3Ds and Wii U eShop closing? I think you mean 3DS. No, I wanted to be 3Ds, you know, because of DDD. <laughs> Forgive me for my pronunciation. <laughs> it's perfect. I like it. Although, um, I mean, it was a, it was about time because since the Wii U not, it only had like 13 million units sold, and the 3DS hasn't been had any new games so it's like i knew it was gonna come but i'm hoping to try at least finish getting some games downloaded before close like i want to get some more ds virtual console games on my wii u and i'll have to take a look at the flea ds store because i think that was a kirby get pokemon bank but it's gonna I... be the only way you'll be able to get pokemon transporter app. Mm. like i know that it wouldn't really serve you that much but like it it, it's going to be essential to anyone that would have Pokemon games. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because especially when the eShop is closing up, the service for Pokemon Bank is going to be free of charge. Your turn, uh, Daniel. Okay, it's from Thomas and Timothy. T Timmy! It's from Timmy. What Timmy. gave you the idea for Thomas and Friends Meets? Oh, right, right. Um, for those who don't know, uh, the first Thomas and Friends Meets, which was the Asdev movie, I made way back in August of 2015. And I just did it just for fun. I thought about it. I was like, I'll oh, just see what happens making my own weird. Because this is nothing new. You'll see a bunch of people doing like Thomas uh, combinations with other shows and YouTubers. So what I'm doing is nothing new. And yet for some reason, like... When I put it on the Mullen Studios channel, all of a sudden it just blew up. Like right, like one of the highest viewed videos that's got over a million views is the second Thomas meets Asdev movies, and it's like, how in the blue heck did that happen? Like, okay, you said that the Thomas and Friends being combined with other shows, yeah, that I could agree with you there, but. Honestly, I'd argue that I've seen that happen more often than not with My Little Pony. Obviously, because, mm -hmm. uh, holy crap. I'm just now looking at my views, and the second Aztec movie is, like, 200,000 views away from getting 2 million. It's like, what? Sweet mother of Wilbert Audrey! Wow. 
technically, I don't... I, all credit for the second one goes to the Doctor, because this was mostly his, because he's been wanting to make... Like, I did write some jokes, but this was definitely his uh, direction, so... Um, he, he gives this all the credit, you know, cause holy crap. What's, what's the most popular question mark, question mark, question mark video by chance? Uh, number three. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> what? What's wrong with number three? No, it, it, I was kind of, I'm, I'm not too upset by it. It's just, I was making jabs. Okay, I was about to say, it's like, number three is pretty good. Yeah. I think that would have been the first time I contributed to a meets, technically, because there was the Arlo jokes I came up with. Yeah. But, and number three is still good, I like it. Um, and then the second one that he asked, uh, is how long does it take to make a Thomas Meets video? Depends it, on the source. Yeah, because, like, yeah. um... Because I don't, I, I personally don't like watch a lot of uh, new YouTubers. I know some people have asked about like some comedy Johnny, uh, some less players and such, but I don't watch a whole lot of gaming YouTubers a lot. Uh, or Honestly, I don't have really thought much about Thomas and Friends meets. I actually have thought about doing something uh, that's somewhat related to your VeggieTales video, uh, Mac. But it's oh, actually... yeah, it's, I still need to make that announcement. Although I guess you kind of just did. Yeah, but I have thought about making a Meats video on another show that Phil Fisher created called What's in the Bible with Buck Denver. Is there enough material to warrant that? I, I thought of a couple ones. I need to rewatch the series. It's actually really good. I personally like it. Uh... But yeah, for those who aren't aware, next collab that's going to be happening for Meats isn't going to be question mark, question mark, question mark. There will still be a question mark seven, don't worry, but we thought it'd be a bit of a change of pace to not wear down that specific one, and instead we're focusing on Veggie Tales. And we are also currently in very very slow production of thomas and friends meets Yu-Gi-Oh! the abridged series mm. and scott the was yeah which i just literally have posted like a behind the scenes pic as was well like oh guess what's coming soon on my twitter like as we were talking so so it's like yeah it's spoiler alert okay I mean, it, uh yeah. next one because i know we are Behind schedule, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, we started right, this at, uh, what, 9 o'clock? And, uh... We are already an hour in. It's like... All right, Lachlan, oh, your turn. Dear. My turn? Okay. Yep. Joseph Marison has asked, who is your favorite Mario character? Uh, it might be weird for some, but I really like <laughs> Shy Guy, because he's so adorable and, uh, just... Cute and all of that jazz. It's Shy Guy yeah, Falls, I isn't it? Not really. It's just because I really like Shy Guy's design and his voice, like, wah, 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 or such, you know? If I recall uh, correctly, he wasn't originally a Mario enemy. Right, he yeah. was uh, from Doki Doki Panic. Which That's got where localized it was as Mario 2, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the oh, original man. Mario 2 uh, in Japan was very close to the first game and it was much harder so it became what is known in the u.s as the lost levels i must say really quick my friends are beckoning me in another call but i'm gonna stay on for a couple more questions so okay, okay. then because i see what's coming up and i want to be part of this so let's go to the next couple of questions before i got i must skedaddle for other business all right all right all right so, I believe the next question is, what's your thoughts on the live-action Mario movie from 1993? I have not actually seen it. I own the oh. DVD, but I haven't watched it. Oh, Delmar, you're in for a treat. Although, actually, one of my managers at work, uh, he actually liked the movie. I mean, he's, he, he's saying it's not, like, the greatest, but that... 
visually it's a fun movie uh, and if, if I you were... don't like think of it as like a mario film it's all right so if i recall correctly the guy who voices luigi would go on to play sid the sloth from ice age yeah john leguizamo he's luigi and he's also Bruno from Encanto, but we cannot speak about Bruno, and we cannot speak about Brick Car Bruno because he's likely not going Isn't to. Isn't there anyone that cares about Bruno the Sloth? <laughs> wait, 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 <laughs> Bruno? I I've only seen that movie once, but I'm surprised I didn't pick up on that. <laughs> well, you gotta trust the fungus, but I can't say more because the Mario movie, you're going to have a fun time watching that, and. Bada boom, we got one more question for the Joseph. section. All right, all right. What was your reaction to Edward and Henry moving out of Tidmouth Sheds in Bwaba? Oh, dear. Oh, boy. I mean, like, oh, I'm glad boy. that they were still, like, in the show. Like, you saw them, like, in the background. Uh, but it was weird because... I mean, I like Nia and Rebecca fine, but to have two legendary characters being, like, on the sidelines, it's it's very hard to kind of see. Because, like, you're watching a show and you're like, where's Edward and Henry? Because they're part of a... In fact, I actually remember this Twitter post. I forgot who it was. This was from years ago where uh, a parent had a kid and they were at a store... And the little kid lined it up all the Steam Team members from Thomas, Edward, Henry, Gordon, James, Percy, Toby, and Emily. And and the kids, like, uh, called them a family. And it's like, you know, that's these Aww. characters have been so Aww. ingrained. Aww. It's like the equivalent of, like, say, making Looney Tunes without Bugs Bunny or Daffy Duck. Like, without them whatsoever. You feel like something's missing. Um, and the same thing, like, if you have Fraggle Rock, if you removed... Uh, Booba and Moki, you just feel like something's missing in the equation. I guess to me, it's kind of like I guess what they kind of symbolize is like you know, I uh, part of me is split in two because it's like on the one hand, there was pretty much nothing going on with them for much of that era, so it's kind of like you know, with how like with Big World, it's kind of like might as well spare them from the blast, as certain fandom people will say. If but I... <laughs> who? Sorry, I. Was... I was going to comment on something regarding their departure, but I'll let you finish. Yeah, for for me, it's, it's tough because it's kind of like, it kind of symbolizes Big World in a way, where it's kind of like, you know, they're leaving the sheds, but they're going to cameo every once in a while. Oh, but it's like, it's, oh, it's, it's hi, hard. Hi, Percy. It's We're hard. In the middle of a Q and A. Perfect. We have a substitute for when I depart. So I guess to finish up my big question... I mean, my, my big question answer regarding the Edward Henry stuff, it's like, it's like, it kind of feels like that sums up the big world era in a way, which is like, you know, and I'm going to be honest in terms of, you know, lower Thomas eras, it's like number one is nitrogen. Big world is a little bit behind. All engines go is third because I kind of like all engines go. But with, with big world, it felt ridiculously all over the place because they were trying, it was basically a compromise kind of thing they were doing. It was kind of like, Either that it was either that or big. World they were trying to have their cake and everything. eat it too. But yeah. The thing is, the yeah. cake itself wasn't. It's like it try. There's. It's like the old saying goes: it tries to appeal to everybody, and it ultimately ended up appealing to nobody. And that's one of the big reasons I think Big World. I mean, I mean, I think All In To Go is actually working. I think people are very fair not to like the show because there's very good reason. But on its own, it's a decent show, and it's kind of fun to watch. And it's kind of like, it's something completely new for Thomas, so I can understand why it's actually doing well on ratings. You know, merchandise is actually selling. Big World, like, what they were doing with all these revamps and stuff, it, they were basically promoting just, like, hey, it's a brand new Thomas reboot, but it was just, like, the same stuff just getting slightly changed with a bunch of new bells and whistles. And they were that, treating really, it like Hot Wheels. Yeah, it's kind of like, I see people go, like, why isn't Thomas treated like Winnie the Pooh or Arthur? That's because most of those show, properties, you know... Like, even Winnie the Pooh's given into a couple of oddball reboots, but it's kind of like they've generally stayed the same, or they've kind of done different incarnations. There's, like, with Winnie the Pooh, you got TV shows like New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, or My Friend Tigger and Pooh. There's kind of like... Adventures! That, like, you know, yeah, <laughs> or Pooh's Adventures originated from, which makes me oh, sad. Oh, no! I actually, started, I actually started binging New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh the other week. It's a fantastic series. I am 
I'm it's mad. It's one of those situations where you're like, oh, that's where that's from. Or like... Literally. They're like the first three, like first couple episodes, it's like, oh no, this is where it all began, didn't it? See, that's because like, when I watch a TV show like that, I'm like, oh, that's where that line came from. Like, um, I was watching yeah. a movie last night, and I'm like, oh, that's what that guy used it from. Okay. But it's like, yeah, it's like, Arthur, it didn't, ch- it, beyond the animation, nothing changed about it throughout the whole run it was on. It was basically the same show, a lot of the same crew, too. Just, <laughs> Literally me. <laughs> Like, okay, just, so like, like it's just like with Big World, it was kind of like it kind of represented how much the show was kind of getting mangled, and in hindsight, it was kind of like you know a mercy kill in a way, just kind of like you know Royal right. Engine goes out on a nice anniversary note, and then it's kind of like okay, we took you to Disney World, we, you, your beef is get you, look look at this cow, okay, yeah, we're gonna go to McDonald's next. I I just need you to turn around and look, look away, don't look behind at the moment. Is there well, you'll be out uh, walking in a pasture. You're, can I talk? You're, you're, uh, you're can making I touch, me sad now. Can I touch on the thing that I was going to mention regarding Edward and Henry's departure? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Realistically, Thomas, Percy, and Edward have no reason to be at Tidmouth Sheds. I mean, yeah, but they were the merchandisable main team, so. Like, if... If we were to really focus back on, like, the original series, like, the only engines that really needed to be there were Gordon, Henry, James, and maybe Donald and Douglas. True. Well, they were there for but, the yeah, sake like, of, like, um, delivering If anything, I, I feel like Edward's departure was a little more justified than what Henry's was. Because yeah, he had a branch line, and he needed to be closer. And <laughs> what Unlucky Tug says, Philip is a good character. Yeah, just kind of like... I think it's small doses, I feel like, but... Yeah. I Unfortunately, from this point forward, on this fine Tuesday, I must depart like the fine bananas in pajamas and descend down the stairs <laughs> of the studio to go to another call. But I would like to say very quickly... Before the Q&A continues, thank you very much, Delmar, for having me for this. No problem. I'm glad you did join us. It's a pleasure. I should probably get some kind of Q&A going for later this year for my channel, Stan Dan, if we come to think of it. And yeah. perhaps only one or two other people from here along for this. But till then, enjoy the rest of the Q&A, fellow listeners. And enjoy the silliness that will ensue while I, was, while I will be gone. All right. Bye. See you, man. Bye. 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 <laughs> All right, Percy, you have the Google Doc up, right? Huh? What's the... Sorry, I, I just joined for the sake of... Um... We're doing a Q&A thing, and it's been going on for two hours. About... Yeah, about uh, two, two hours. Two hours? <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me look at the... Let's see. Ivan Shorts 10 says, what's your favorite wooden... Re- we already covered this. Yeah. Okay. What do you think about Magic Railroad? <laughs> I feel like it's a movie really made for no one. Well, because the fact- audience that grew up with Cheyenne Time Station would be old enough to not really care for Thomas. People that live it outside of North America wouldn't understand it. I thought so, it was a decent movie. It's a guilty pleasure. I mean, yeah, I like I loved a- it. A- I loved yeah, I it, it as a, a child. Kid. I loved it as a child because it was Thomas and I loved seeing the human actors interact with the trains and I love it as an adult for a mix of nostalgia and ironic enjoyment. Hmm. Although for me, it's some I haven't watched the film in years, but that's mostly because I kept having to edit a long, long film that took a very long time to make, but I might rewatch it someday, but I'll Probably get the Blu-ray disc um, if it's still oh, on Amazon. Do get Amazon. the Blu-ray. Do get the Blu-ray. It's worth the money. Oh my gosh! I, 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 just, did, I did have copies of that. So. I just realized with the current order, we managed to skip over Percy. Well, I just oh. said um, the how the movie's made for no one. No, like we're reading off the questions. Oh right, sorry. Um, yeah, uh, so, get... I guess you get to read off the next two. Right, okay. Um, AA20 says, How did you start YouTube? I um, started back in 2010 of December. Uh, and I've been wanting to have YouTube for a while, but I want, like, this may sound silly to some, but I wanted to wait till I was 
somewhat old enough. Uh, instead of like, because uh, if I start, if I had a YouTube account back when I first had internet in tw 2006, then I wouldn't even know what to do then. But uh, of course, I wanted to get my mom's permission if I could, and she was like, "Yeah, sure, go on ahead." So there you go. And I was, you see, 2010. I was six, 16, then. And uh, yeah, I would have been 12 back then because remember, you and I were four years apart. Yeah. Uh, and I, I I believe I it was twenty eleven when I when we first started collaborating and I think I might have been thirteen when we met. I can't we it's been eons ago. Oh man. Oh man oh man. Man oh, I memories. that I'm old <laughs> Well, a bunch of grumpy old men. That's what we are. Now that we're men, <laughs> we can do anything. anything. Now that we're men, now that we're men. Gonna, I change my life. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be brutally honest. There was once a time where you were the first. You were legitimately the first person I actually talked to over Skype, and it honestly got me excited every time we talked. And. uh... Man, 13-year-old me was kind of nuts. We were young back then. Yes, yes. There were the bad times, but uh, we're not going to get into those. Question two is, um, have you ever heard of Tiny Rails? So what is that, what is that? like a type what? of matchbox is, thing? Or? Is, that, is that like a parody of Tiny Bubbles? Tiny Tunes. <sighs> um, I... I think it's, a, it's an app game you play. Okay, Tiny Rails, I'm looking this up now. Okay, there's apparently a wiki. Uh, what is this? Oh, it's like a, uh, mobile game? Yeah, this is the first thing that popped up. Hold on, uh, where is, uh, chat? Come on. Wait, it's a mobile game. Hold on, I might have, uh... This. Yeah, it looks like a mobile game. Um... I've never heard of it until just now, so I can't... Yeah! Like, build your train? interesting. Same here. Uh, I mean, it seems harmless enough, but... Uh, as long as there's no microtransactions, I think we good. I get the feeling yeah. that it might... I'm not sure. But it it mm. looks like... Because I see, like, diamonds and coins, so I get the feeling it has an option where you could pay money to but buy... But, like, so long as it's not basically required, I think we good. Yeah, I don't think I'm it's saying. required, but it has that option where you could... I'm guessing the next questions are going to be read out by Tyler. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, okay, now this one is from Cole Phelps, 1947. First question, how old are you? 28. Okay. Yeah, although he, there was two other questions that I had to remove because he was asking, like, where do I live? My address, like, those? I... Yeah. It's the <laughs> Honestly, some people need to not snoop around too like much. Like, age, you know, that doesn't seem like a big deal to me, but, you know. Hi, I'm a big fan. Can you give me your... I'm a big fan. What's your age? What's your address? What's your credit card numbers? What's your blood type? <laughs> like the spaghetti. Your How's your sex life? What? <laughs> uh, nice question. <laughs> Oh, moving. Okay. Right, next, next question. And number four, aka number two, what was the worst episode of Thomas Comedies in terms of production? In terms of production? The movie. <laughs> yeah, because that just took a long while, and I know that there were times when me and Lachlan <laughs> uh, had a hard time trying to agree on a certain gag and such, but honestly that helped me grow a lot and learn about communication when two people are working on the yeah. same project yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, honestly i feel like most of the film's delays came from me being a perfectionist and uh honestly i i, I feel like a lot of the film's delays were partially my fault and for that i do apologize but mm -hmm. it turned out good in the end Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. It out great. Put a I, lot actually of heart. I actually rewatched the whole thing not long ago, and I still think it's a good film, and we did a good job on it. 
I mean, how yeah, many you... people can claim that they've made a full-length remake of Magic Railroad? At least yeah. two of them. At least I three definitely, I definitely choose it over the one that Mr. Conductor fan made. Yeah, you honestly, guys. Re- I mean, yeah, I honestly, enjoy the parody <laughs> of the film as well. Plus, honestly, honestly, I think. Plus I think both put- are acceptable. I think both are acceptable. It just depends on what you're looking for in a Magic yeah. Railway character. And that's plus, why I that's why I said that I choose one over the other. Yeah, plus you guys put a lot of effort into making that read up. So great job. Yeah, I, if I wanted to have Thomas and Friends but South Park, I would go to Mr. Conductor Fan. Oh, well, I don't want Thomas and the Magic Railroad but South Park, so I went with Delmar's thing. Yeah. All right. Anyways, for the final question, number uh, question five slash three, favorite Thomas character. I think we've already been through that, haven't we? Uh, I think we did like favorite t- Thomas character, the voice, but favorite character. Yeah. I would have to really think about it. That actually might be a video I might try to do, of like, okay. uh, like, what type of like my favorite Thomas characters list. So, Anyways, it's your turn. All right. Little Western Branch Line question is, who is the best and worst Thomas character? The best one uh, pending, it might be Henry or Edward or Slow Coach. But the worst Thomas character, hmm. I mean... Frankie. Uh, f- f- whoa, that was quick. <laughs> well, um, okay. <laughs> It's not that she's a bad character, it's just I don't like how her story arc ends. Because it's like, you'll never get away with this. Eh, not only do you get away with this, but I shall offer you these slaves. Hooray! Huh. Yay! She, you've got to have some sort of repercussions. I'm sorry. Not to mention the crying scene was kind of awkwardly acted and animated like uh no like, tears she had no tears how much you want to bet she was faking it i think she was i mean i felt a bit more shame for hurricane because he wasn't exactly like being mean honestly yeah, it's like... he so, was the cronk to frankie's yuzma Holy yeah. crap, oh. I can actually use that. Oh, if, I ever work into random, if I ever work them into random railway channels, that is totally how I'm going to portray them. What, is Kronk and Yuzma? Yeah. Sadly, I can actually picture that. <laughs> Someone draw the... Pull the lever, Hurricane! <laughs> Row the lever! <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I think it's your turn, Lachlan. Alright. Oh, wait. Delmar never said who he thought was the worst Thomas character. Oh, oh, never mind then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I think Frankie was pretty bad, but uh, yeah, I guess I, I will also mention I, Billy. Billy was just a stuck-up. Flynn. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like the new, he, he acts like Flynn. the new... Flynn. He kind of acts like the new Eric Cartman way and such. Like, he doesn't... He doesn't do work, and he doesn't listen to others' others' orders and such. Alex the LMS Jinty asks, "Are you getting the 2020? Wait, is this? Am I supposed to read this out, or is Mac? It's you. We're going off a better right. plea, Remember? Okay. Are you getting the 2022 wooden railway engine? Too late. I I got them, and I also I literally quite recently ordered the uh." figure eight set amazon had it up so it's like ooh. so yeah i yeah. i got that took care of yeah all right Percy, can i turn. just can i just say 2022 percy looks utterly perfect he does yeah um mm-hmm. right Ackley attack productions uh wait is this a different guy this is the yeah is this the faker one yeah is this is the guy? imposter Ah, the ah. sus one. Okay. Um, <laughs> he writes, um, which is your favorite Muppet? Oh, well, my favorite Muppet character. Um, like, I there's a lot of great Muppet characters, and I'm not just talking about the one that goes kaboom and such. Um, 
Okay. Did somebody say kaboom? No! Oh, hey, it's Crazy uh-huh. Donald. Oh, boy. No? Okay, I'll go. I really enjoy some characters, like, I enjoy um, Floyd Pepper. Uh, he's just, like, the coolest <coughs> Muppet. Plus, I love uh, the bass. That's, like, my favorite instrument, so he's up there. Uh, Gonzo, I mean, he's just an amazing character. I love his crazy stunts and how energetic he gets. Plus, not to mention, uh, he's like one of the last original Muppet characters to still have his original puppeteer performing him, which is quite a fleet once you really think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that, really, that really is impressive. Yeah, I mean, I think Dave Ghost has now been with the Muppets for like maybe 45 years, close to 50 probably at this rate. Oh, wow. I, I think it would be around the 50 range because the Frackle puppet as Gonzo originally started out, I think that came out around the same time Sesame Street was beginning to kick off. Yeah, I, I remember, I can't remember, uh, I thought it was in the 70s that came out, like the early 70s, the Great Santa Claus which came out. I think they did two different versions of that. Okay, so next question. It says, which Thomas Meats video is your favorite? Okay, that one... I know I might get some questions. Well, because I know technically the man who is currently the lead of Thomas and Friends Meats has full right to say I am wrong about this decision, even though I'm the creator, but uh, my favorite one that so far is Jacksepticeye 2. I don't see any problem with that. Because there was just so many good jokes. And the one joke I really liked was the f- one with the original uh, version of Henry the Green Engine with that era. And just having Jack go, no, you can't show that kid. Like, you know. Yeah. You- <laughs> I think Percy here actually helped out with creating that joke. Which one? In Jacksepticeye 2 where you had the original version of Whistles and Sneezes. I I don't remember if I did anything. Like, you were the one to bring to light the fact that there was an original version of that episode, of that story that used the (laughs) N-word. Oh! 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 Also, the the part where Oliver and Kelly is arguing with Jack's country voice, it was just like... That one. Like, that one was just hilarious. Like, son of a gun, Kelly! I'm sorry, okay? Dang it! Get back in the truck! <laughs> it was just perfect, because I, cause I don't care what anyone says. Michael Brand is a good narrator. And whenever he uses his country voice, it's just pure magic. It's like, I'm a great western engine. I shouldn't have to shiver. I have the voice of an angel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. How could I be very useful? <laughs> How the children I... are very special. How can I make the children stay really special? He is very friendly. <laughs> he can't get bigger than me. That's right. Really, that's literally half the. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, it's me. <laughs> yeah, like, Go- like, that's literally half his voices. I mean, thankfully, uh, uh, Gordon's voice throughout uh, gets better, but the season eight version of Gordon, I don't know why. He did Not the, me. You'll never catch me looking so ridiculous. Like the gruff was just, just weird. See, um, I, f- I feel like he has his moments. It's just the problem is I feel like he doesn't have a good vocal range. I feel I like I think that's partially to blame from Hit Entertainment's direction. Because like Michael Brand just kind of comes off as being like, oh, well, these other people did it. I can do it, too. Kind of thing. Uh, that's kind of the energy I got with that. Um, like, no, no doubt, he is a good narrator. It's just his okay. Thomas stuff leaves a lot to be desired. Sam Kilsby says, are you going to... Bu- Can I get a different question? We already answered this. Yeah, but <laughs> I figured we'd mention, at least mention his name, you know. So we don't want to, yeah. like, uh, uh, go, go about <laughs> not mentioning uh, okay. the people, so... Engine number 14 says... Who would you say is your favorite Looney Tunes character? Okay, there's two characters I love. Uh, one of them is very, it's like a very minor character. Uh, who only appeared in one 
original Looney Tunes cartoon, and that's the Gremlin from the cartoon Fallen Hair, because, I mean, I love Bugs Bunny, but to see him get utterly screwed by a different character... What about the turtle? Oh, oh yeah, the turtle's oh, cool. But, like, uh, the no. Gremlin is just so lunatic, and... I just also love his design as well. Like, when I picture oh. the Gremlin from that book, that's the one I think of. Uh, just because his design is great, and then... I love the Bob Clampett and Tex Avery Daffy because... I think... I know the gremlin you're talking about. I've watched that classic when I was young. I loved it. Yeah. But uh, I know a lot of people love like the Chuck Jones, Greedy, Daffy Duck. But for me, what makes the Bob Clampett Daffy is like... First off, it actually captures his name because he's Daffy. But also too, like he's... To me, the best way to describe... Uh, the Bob Clampett Tex Avery Daffy, he's like a little kid who's on the ultimate sugar high and is given a gun, and <laughs> oh boy! Like I don't know if that's the best way because he's just so hilarious, and the and especially with the newer Looney Tune cartoons with Eric Bazua voicing Daffy, it's just the pinnacle of how great that character persona mm-hmm. can be. Uh, mm-hmm. It's yeah. just I love that uh, version of Daffy so much. Yeah. Did you ever collect any of the Tommy slash Trackmaster toys? If so, what do you have in your possession? Uh, I actually do have quite a bit. Uh, granted, the uh, app uh, in my mom's garage. Uh, I have a lot of them actually. Didn't um, you have a Trackmaster Kenji for sale? Uh, or am I thinking of someone else? Oh, um, I. Well, I have the, um, I did have the motorized Kenji that was going to send to Lachlan, but he's getting the Prela, so I still have that in my possession. Unless you know anyone who will want a Kenji motorized. Uh, with the whole trap miss, I have thought about maybe digging them out and seeing if anyone's interested, because I know there's some, like, I have Flora, Hank, with, uh, Diesel 10. I have a bunch of them, especially some of the earlier ones, so... Maybe I can dig them out, and if anyone will want them, or I'll sell them or something. I don't know. We'll see how to, how it goes. Because I'm definitely more of a wooden wear away person, and of course, probably getting back to tank along thanks to the podcast that we did a while back. Well, anyway, let me say you're welcome. <laughs> Have you heard of the new Muppet series starring Electric Mayhem? What are your thoughts on it? Were they making a series? Yeah, yeah, this, this is, is something that was recently announced to doing a new Muppet series based on the Electric Mayhem. So, Dr. Um, T, Floyd, Animal. Um, and I... Okay, I'm not just saying this because we're finally getting more Muppets content instead of any of that Marvel, Star Wars bollocks that keeps popping up like flies. No offense, I'm just really burned out by that. But a series based on the Electric Mayhem making an album sounds... Really cool. I am so looking forward to it. I know that you were just... I know this was a Muppet-related question, but the fact you mentioned Star Wars, I will say I did... In the last Q&A, I did say that I was into Star Wars thanks to the LEGO games. I ended up getting Skywalker Saga recently, and it's managed to rekindle a bit of my interest in the Star Wars franchise as a whole. Yeah. Well, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Star Wars and Marvel are bad, because, uh, I mean, I know they're good and there's people who love them and I'm glad that Disney's pumping out this stuff. But there's just been so many shows and movies being released that he just gets kind of burnt out a little bit. I know? don't think that either really needs to be in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, please. No, we don't need that in Kingdom Hearts because that would just mess a lot of things up. But, like... Uh, I mean, like... I think I'd, between the two, I'd take Star Wars over Marvel, assuming yeah. they're wanting to use the MCU. Since because... the MCU, like, itself, the world itself, is just un- it's just not interesting. Like, well, not like, even, oh, we'll make not this... E- oh, sorry. Not even, it's, it's not even that, just the fact that the, in- the MCU, everything is connected. Like, the fact that you have to watch a lot of the films just to understand anything that's going on. The fact you would also have to play a video game series on top of that? No. And plus, Kingdom no. Hearts is as well as complicated as well, so it's like, that's another layer to it that's kind of... 
I mean, credit where it's due. At least it's not a the timeline is not as convoluted as Legend of Zelda's. That one splits into three different ones. Well, with Zelda, you can kind of not have to worry about playing. You you could play any game in any order. Because for me, at least, I can view Zelda as something that is not canon. You could play any one and it's perfectly fine. Just like any Mario game. Like if Odyssey was your first one, then then that's good. You don't have to worry about figuring out what those the references and everything mean. Although I guess if uh, like, but yeah, I I. I could see Star Wars being in the series more than MCU because it's it's literally just the first two world wars with a bit of the Cold War sprinkled in, but outer space. I never thought I heard that statement, but okay, well, well that, but yeah, They're it's like stormtroopers. And but <laughs> before anyone takes what I say out of context, I I don't hate Star Wars or Marvel like. I'm glad people enjoy it, but for me, I'm just burnt out from it because they make so many, and I'm just burnt out at this point. At this point, th- this topic deserves to be a podcast all its own. Probably, yeah. Then also, I'm more of a Muppets person, so I, I just want to see more stuff done, you know? I I want to see my, my little talking socks do stuff and everything, and maybe get Crazy Harry to blow up some more stuff. <laughs> Actually, oh, he would be an excellent Avenger, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, they already, oh, yeah. have, they already have Sam the Robot. Oh, yeah, that's right. But, yeah, it's like, I, I would love to see Crazy Harry be part of the Avengers, like, just to mess up everyone's day. <laughs> okay, yeah, the next one. Cool. All right, final question, because uh, one was already answered. All right, now... This one is from Fabio Di B. B. Micelli. Forgive me if I've mispronounced his last name wrong. And we've already answered this. Answered your favorite engine. So, on to the final question. What is your opinion on Sodor Fallout and Shed 17? I haven't seen Sodor Fallout. I know about it, but I haven't seen or read it. But Shed 17, I watched uh, once, and it was interesting, but the ending was so messed up. It it gave me, like, the funny thing is, I watched that on a night that I was going to work, and uh, when I went to work and such, and keep in mind, I work in the nighttime, I was still feeling like this eeriness, oh, and it was just Creep. so unnerving. If I actually yeah. see that, like, Shed 17, uh... That actually reminds me of this funny story that I think I want to share. Uh, so oh, this, yeah. <laughs> so, so this was about uh, a week ago after I first watched it. And uh, I had some of my friends come over on one of my days off. It was me, my brother Black Cross, uh, Doug, Doug, who started making videos and made videos for this channel. and He played Dodge in the movie. Yeah, and a good friend of mine named Brandy, who actually voiced it a vert for a small sketch I did in one of my Neptunia reviews. Um, so we all got together and I don't know how I convinced them, but I convinced them to watch Shed 17. Uh, and we watched it. They were getting interested, but then it got to the final scene uh, where Thomas is in Shed 17 as such. Uh, yep. And I didn't want to watch it again because, well, you know, nightmare. So I was like, you guys keep watching. I'm going to take Cody Lou, who was still living at this point, and yet I'm use the bathroom and back porch. And it's like, all right. And I was just waiting for screams because, like, I was terrified for it. So I want to see how they will react. Well, when it got to the part where I'm trying to make sure not to spoil this for anyone who's interested, when something happens to Thomas, I, I was waiting for screams, and then I heard Doug's laughter and. Uh, granted, you will have to know, Doug, he has, whenever he sees something really funny, he will lose laughter. Like, it is so hilarious. And I was just hearing him laughing so hard. And then I heard Brandy and, and, uh, Black Cross laughing. And it was like, huh? So I walked in, I saw them watching that scene, and they were just laughing. It's like, the crap, you guys are laughing? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> 
They were laughing at part one of the most horrific scenes. And I think Brandy and uh, Chris was laughing because of Doug more than they were the scene. Because Doug's laugh is contagious. And Doug's yeah. face was bright red. He almost fell out of the computer chair. Oh, it's like, wow. He's like, Doug, was... you thought that was funny? He's like, it was just the funniest crap ever. He said something else, but... Yeah, yeah like, I, I, like, this is stuff that I can't make up. I mean, granted, I'm sure... Uh, I mean, there was some funny scenes in Shed 17, like when oh, they that... had the um, cadet, I forgot his role, but one of the workers uh, interview, and oh, every really? time he was interviewed or reminded of Thomas, he kind of puked and such. Um, Honestly, the reaction that you were saying, like, with how Doug reacted, kind of reminded me of one of your Del Mar show bloopers where you and one of the people that is involved in your show, well, was involved in your show. I think it was one of the top 10 videos. They were trying to take up residence in the futon, and you just hear yourself make a little toot, and then Black Cross oh, just yeah. falls on the floor laughing. That's right. He's like, it's just all oh, this is going okay. And then Daniel's like, Burr. That's right. <laughs> um, <sighs> but yeah, um, but yeah, I think the, the movie itself, like, um, especially like with a better understanding, it, it's supposed to be like taking the piss out of um, the thing. Like, it's not meant to be taken seriously, which I've noticed, like, that Project G1 tends to fall more into the comedy aspect, I noticed. Um, and yeah, people are you... taking it seriously. Yeah. That are outsiders. Yeah, because I think, like, a lot of, like, younger people were, like, took it seriously kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Also, if you've seen RoboCop, it's pretty much taking that plot from that. Um, mm-hmm. RoboCop 2 and 1 kind of thing. But Wait, they had a sequel? Yeah, RoboCop had three movies. Um, Why am I only knowing about this now? I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, I think that, like, I kind of wish that Paul Viz kind of explored other TV shows than Thomas. Because I think that definitely, like, like so I like his Bertha one as well as I remember um, the, the Johnny Five one. I have seen the Bertha one. Is it weird for me to say that I think Bertha, the character, would fit right at home in Bob the Builder? Oh, yeah, I no. could say that. No, that totally makes sense, actually. But yeah, as, a fall as, as far as, as I say fall as Fallout, sorry, as far as Fallout, sort of Fallout goes, I, like, like, I'm on the same boat. I've never really, like, went into it or cared for it. Yeah. It kind of existed. Um, After seeing everyone talk about it for a long time, I thought I'd finally check it out myself and read it, and, yeah, it, it, it was okay. Like, like, like nothing super special, but it was okay. I know the author's kind of ashamed of it right now, and I, 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 I honestly don't blame him. But, you know, it wasn't terrible. Is, this, is it still, like, continuing like going on or did he end the story because i think it's like different chapters ain't it i think at this point stuff like this is the timothy the ghost engine of our day actually speaking of when did that came up because i because i I don't know never really heard about it till like recent years it's like where did that came about I don't know. It just it just showed up on like a creepy pasta wiki one day. No one knows who wrote it or who put it there, and uh, all we know is that it exists. If I anyone think if knows, I recall correctly, who... steam-powered cyborg might know some insight regarding Timothy. Or, of course, we also Ooh. have forty fourteen fan that be able to help us out with this. We finally got done! Yay! 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 I'm gonna go lay down on the ground. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, almost three hours, and we finally made it through. So yep. damn, <sighs> this is what a journey. Be a good... This is gonna be a good one. I just knew it. Yay! <laughs> yeah, we can all yeah. go have hush puppies. Who likes hush puppies? What are hush made... puppies made out of again? Uh, it's like breading and such. Not actual puppies. Don't worry. No, I mean, like, isn't it filled with stuff as well? Uh, it's kind of like. Uh, garlic powder, pancreas flour, mix, um, 
milk okay. at this point and such. It's not really like a fish food per se. It's kind of like a bre- like a round it's a, bread. It's a garnish. Food, I guess. Or a side dish. Yeah. Which uh, well, me and Chris I, are going to attempt to try making ourselves, so that will be pretty nice. But... I, I wasn't sure if I would enjoy it, because I've, for my entire life, have grown up with taste sensory issues. Yeah. And I don't blame you. But thank you guys to those who submitted the questions for the Q&A. Um, hope y'all have fun with this. I know I had fun with laughing with everyone. I know we had a lot of people coming and going, and I just thank everyone for joining me. This was fun. And who's all ready to take a nap? Say I. I'm ready to go to bed in a few hours. So, yeah. Yeah. Bedtime for everyone. I just realized this is going to be the only Q&A that we have where Lachlan didn't ask Delmar if he's seen a show. (laughs) Well, I I think think bringing up Amphibia, Owl House, and Molly McGee kind of counts. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Um, have you seen Bluey? <laughs> oh yeah, Bluey's, Bluey's probably the best thing to come out of Australia since the Wiggles. Honestly, okay, you know how Defunct Land said that Bear in the Big Blue House is meant to be the anti-Barney? Yeah. <laughs> I believe, I am wholeheartedly in the belief that Bluey is the anti-Peppa Pig. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. I saw a meme once where we see Daddy Pig and, like, Bandit from Bluey. It's like, hey, you're Bandit Healer. Yes, you're a cartoon dad. Yes, I'm a cartoon dad. So, does that mean you're better than me? Well, I've never watched your show, but yes. And then they beat the crap out of each other. Yeah, it's like, fight to the death. Before it was a kid's show, Peppa Pig... No, before it was a kid's show, Bluey was at one point pitched to be an adult parody of Peppa Pig. They decided not to go with that, though. So it's a reverse family guy situation. Kinda, yeah! That's right, Family Guy was pitched to be a show on Cartoon Network at one point. Are we still recording? Yes, yes, we're still, we're still recording. recording. So, anyway, thank you guys for watching this. God bless you all, and we'll see you on the next video podcast saying bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Have bye, a super everybody. big chocolate puzzle, Master Day. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.